This week on Twende, we will visit Northern Wajir. Huku kuna milima na mabonde. Look at that view. Breathtaking. This country has so many jewels, you know. Places you never thought would offer this kind of landscape. You come here and then you see this. Yes, this is Wajir. I go in search of waterfalls in Gurar. There are interesting rock formations and we are back to road troubles. We are literally like 150 meters, 200 meters for Tama. This is the final hurdle and then we fight this. We get to drive on one of the best roads in Northern Kenya. Our journey to Wajir has taken longer than we had anticipated because of challenges arising on the road. This is the earliest we've ever left. Uh, it's 3.15. Um, yeah, I feel fresh. As fresh as you can be at 3.15 after sleeping at around night. midnight. It is day five and we are supposed to be in Masabit on our way back to Nairobi. We spent a day longer because of the Shatter Abak route. Leo ni ile siku ya kujaribu ku catch up with time. Wajir is quiet after a day of Eid Mubarak lakini bado kuna hawa watu wanawapeleka ngamia kichinjioni. We are soon out of the tarmac zone and back to the loose surface road. This donkey tries to get our attention. I don't speak donkey, but I think he was trying to tell us about his friends on the road. Whoa. The road from Wajir to Buna is not so bad, although at night in a car up and your bedroom yanga mia na punda. We also get to see a bit of wildlife. There was also a striped hyena, but it disappeared before we got it on camera. We still have to drive across puddles of water. Even with wild animals running around, we meet Aftena walking in the dark with her donkeys in search of firewood. ولكن <laughs> 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 Like in other parts of rural Kenya, this is the daily routine of the women here. Very impressed. It was nice to get to meet her, get to talk, get to learn uh, a, a new term in uh, Somali. Kusema it is good. Fianta he. Najua ni meifanya hivi hivi na ki accent kingine kia Nairobi, but it's something I didn't know, and now you know as well. Fianta he. This is the daily routine of most of the women in this part of Kenya. We get to Eldas Town where the roads are being prepared for the first stomach. We settle in for some break. Yeah, boy. 
Nasikia vile weke sa menyambia This is chapati made in a lot Chapati niyeke chapu kwa jagi The people are out early Watu wa meendelea na shugli zao za kujenga nchi It is sunrise and you still have quite the distance to cover On the horizon something appears that we left a long time in Wingi most of Wajir is flat with no hills or mountains, but as we are approaching the Ethiopia border, the hills are starting to appear. The road is smooth and makes for good driving. We decided to try and pick up some speed and almost immediately regret it. A Geronuk springs from the bush and almost collides with us. As we approach Buna, the hills are getting closer and closer. From Buna towards Bute, it feels like we are now in a national park. There's quite a lot of bush and the place is teeming with wildlife. We spot a lot of dick dicks along the route as well. The wildlife is very resilient and has managed to survive the drought on their own. We also spot a jackal but it hid before we could capture it on camera. Mm. Inaitwa Barkin Morao in Somali. Barkin Morao. Barkin Barkin ina maanisha pilo. Barkin. Yeah, Barkin Warawa. Warawa. Warawa ina maana fisi. Barkin so, Warawa. Ni pilo ya fisi. Pilo ya fisi. Yeah. To me notice footprints hapa. Uh, and uh, let me guess. Cheetah. But you have a look. Lion, Brachita, they are very common in this area. Nurdin would know better as a few years ago he covered a cheetah story around here that went viral in the world. Six years old male cheetah was captured alive by Mzee Hassan and his four sons. <laughs> Wajir is an important bird area with many birds in Kenya having breeding sites here. Two weeks ago, the creature the Somali call Morothi made a dramatic comeback. Actually, July 8th, elephants came into Wajir with one making it as far as Eldas. The irony is that even with a significant wildlife population of herbivores and carnivores, the county doesn't have a single park or national reserve. When someone tells you Northeastern, what do you see? Usually it's a flat ground, it's a desert, it's, it's desolate. But we've seen so many different types of vegetations uh, and, um, you know, and terrain. And right now, if you look at the soil, it's red. And then on this side, believe it or not, on a year, it's not flat. Hills covered in clouds isn't something you would expect to see here, is it? Well, we are now getting closer to Wajir North. One reason why wildlife thrives in pastoralist areas is because the people share the land with wildlife. Along the road, people are on the move back to their homes after the rains have regenerated the land. Many animals have died, but also many have survived. Mm. Get it. 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 Get it.
pole sana kwa vile mifugo yako yamekufa. Ni There are many roadblocks along the way and some require us to open for ourselves. Nurdin is about to discover that opening this barrier isn't as simple as it looks. In this part of Wajir, the land is littered with animal carcasses. We finally hit the tarmac near Gurar. We are now driving at the foot of the hills. It feels very different because all along we have been moving without seeing hills and valleys. This is what they probably call a hybrid road. It has sections of tarmac and loose surface. By the way, what does Burar mean? I'm sure you are thinking it is a Somali or Burana word that has to do with hills. It is actually a British name. GURAR is an acronym that stands for Garrison United Rifle African Range. The British had a garrison here during the colonial era. Remember that the Italians had captured this territory for one year in 1940. So technically, part of Kenya was colonized by the Italians. Moyale to Takaba. Arms of security mm. is one of the safest roads to Mandera. Yeah. Because I have a border. I have a border. I have a I have a border. I have a border. I have a border. Mm. Like 10 kilometers to the border. Yeah. Now notice there's, uh, there's, there are very many features here. Let's mm. see the features. Yeah, there are many features. There are art rock formations. Mm. Like mm. You know, yes, there are many features. There are many short peak. There are many features of flesh eating bird. Mm. 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 Eagle. Eagle. Oh. Eagle is what is Somali? Tampi. Eh? Tamfe. Tamfe. Oh, Tamfe. Tamfe. Oh, Tamfe. 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 We are, however, interested in a specific rock. The Somalis call it Mas Didin. This one doesn't need a lot of imagination, as the animals depicted are rather quite obvious. Mas ni nyoka, na didin ni tortoise kwa kisomali. It almost seems like someone carved the animals on the rock. We are done with one of the main attractions in Gurar and now head to our next destination, Gurar Waterfalls. We've left the car there. Uh, the, whatever we're going is not accessible by car. Now we are walking. And Kunanyesha. This is why Wajir has a high forest cover. I bet you didn't think that this would... You know, this doesn't even look like oh. Wajir. Did the pictures in your Yeah, bro. Yeah. I found Nani Evie. This is amazing. It's a jungle. Yeah. Imagine shooting. 
kishutu huko unaweza shoot arid area jungle area this is a great destination for for so much because i am the only one who had faith in wajir to produce rain i am made to carry all the gear sasa hiyo ni ungwana we however have to be cautious as we walk on the river bed as during the rainy season there can be flash floods that is why we have deco with us evidence of how powerful the water can be is clear as we get to this destroyed concrete dam wall we also realize that we have a reason to be cautious and this reason has teeth when I first heard of waterfalls in Wajir, I thought that it would be easy to get to them. So panda hapa sa easy but um, as when you go to Rome do as the Romans do, utapanda na viatu. Ah uh, look at that view breathtaking this country has so many jewels you know places you never thought would offer this kind of landscape you come here and then you see this ilazma turudi u mlima unaitwa aje fuga 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 o ina ro fuga ah okay you lazma turudi These waterfalls are so hidden. Kama tungekuwa na deco, atungezipata. So hapa inakaa kama chill spot ya deco. Na nimeona hapa kuna kuna nafasi nyingine acha nikae hapa. Hata mimi ni enjoy. getting dicey and dicey as we the farther we go because the rocks are, are becoming sharper and sharper but it's worth it's worth all of it because the view is just it gets better and better as you go hmm? ah this is fantastic and up ahead there's something i want to show you something special something we need more of especially in this northeastern then there they are to be honest it isn't what i expected but remember this is wajir and there are no permanent rivers what makes this fall special is that they flow almost throughout the year because the water is stored in a sand dam the sun what it helps is that it reduces evaporation and pia inapima ile maji yenye inatoka and no wonder this water doesn't dry up because most of it is not just getting lost you know downstream kuna yenye nashikiliwa hapa this part of wajir is near where the ethiopian highlands start because of this the climate here is different there are thicker forests and it can even get colder during the kenyan winter We are back on the road and make it to the town in Wajir that has Lewa guarding it. What does it look like to you? Staki kuambia alafu mwanze kusema asijuni stories za jaba. I think it looks like a lion and that is why the locals call it Burta Lewa, the lion hill in Somali. Lewa is Simba kwa Kisomali. It is also called Mlima Simba. Simba ndio hii hapa. Hapa mbele the main is right over there. Simba inaangalia hii direction. The rest of the body is behind. Amazing isn't it? Sculpture yani take it. Hizi mmezoea sculpture zile ndogo. Hii ndio hii kubwa zaidi. Tumekuja mpata inspiration. Nice town, Bute. Uh, and chill. It is safe to say that this is the largest lion monument in Kenya or Africa, in fact, maybe even the world. While the major towns are getting paved surfaces, Bute has to contend with bad roads 
even within the town huku ni kama hata pro box zinapata challenge zile tunaona sana sana ni land cruisers along the journey we have seen carcasses but in bute there is too many of them i think it is because bute means place of water many people brought their livestock here hoping to save them but they were more than the land could carry even though the rains are here this is a harsh reminder that there hasn't been any for years and the fear still lingers of this kind of devastation and um, this makes me acutely aware that we are still at the mercy of nature so we might as well listen to it so that we can avoid or at least mitigate some of this Wajir is one of the counties that borders two countries, Somali to the east and Ethiopia to the north. However, there are no official border crossings. Beyond the hills is Ethiopia. Na hatuwezi toka hapa kama hatujafika uhadeshi. We are now in a race against time as we need to get to Moyale before 6 p.m. when the border is closed. We officially cross from Wajir into Marsabit as it is the only county with an official border with our northern neighbors Ethiopia here we come Once in Barabara we are literally like 150 meters 200 meters Watama this is the final hurdle and then we fight it. Just when we had thought our road troubles are behind us we get this lorry stuck at the only crossing point yani ni kama move there's no way of going round it the truck is firmly stuck and the only way across is after it has moved it is very risky because if there are sudden flash floods this lorry will be taken a dip at lag bohol Our goal of getting to Ethiopia is fading with every passing minute and we start to lose hope. After a long process the lorry is finally free. We are back on the road. We get to what I think is the best road in Kenya, the A2. For a long time it used to be one of the worst roads in Kenya but finally what hapa walipata fueni when it was completed. It is very wide and has generous climbing lanes as you approach Moyale. Watu wa Masabit walikuwa wanapitia zile shida watu wa Moyale walikuwa wanapitia lakini hatimaye kulikucha na sasa ni starehe. First time ever in Moyale. Hata sikuwa najua ni county. Yeah, I mean ni, ni border county. A border town. I'm excited. Uh, I want to take everything in. Just see what Oh, it, na, Barabara is very nice apparently this was, a, this was a bad road but look at how it has changed everything then you see bar, uh, Bashi, the Kolo, compared to Zile Zangarita. the passes on this route have a low clearance as the road is all smooth to Nairobi with about 20 minutes left to the border closing we make a quick dash to Ethiopia citizens of either Kenya or Ethiopia are allowed to cross the border without travel documents as long as it is near the border towns the town in ethiopia is also called moyale while in ethiopia do like the ethiopians lakini it in raw meat is where i draw the line so we ask uh, to have our meat cooked it turns out that because the previous day was eid mubara the authorities have extended the border opening to 6:30 So we have just enough time to eat. It starts to rain and it is time to head back home. It's fun running in the rain. Why are you running? Because I want to get across the border. Oi! Oh, hey. I have just crossed the border. You know We've been told that the cut off time is 6:25. Uh again we've been rained on in in the north. So rain is a blessing. At least hapa barabara ziko poa. Uh yeah, what about the shade? Yeah. Still have a long journey to Masubi. <laughs> 
Day 2 finds us in Modogashe, a town at the Garissa Isiolo border. The speckled pigeon is trying to save the species and the sparrow is going against the rules here. Last night was a long one and the only accommodation we could get was this place. On the bright side, Nurdin Amerudi back to default settings and is making use of the outdoor plumbing. As Nurdin is enjoying good health, Wekesa is not. The Somali call it Ashakuro. something like that. So 500 units are part of accommodation poor. Who said we are now narrow be fly. Morning reveals we are on the banks of the seasonal Modo River, the boundary of Isiolo and Garissa counties. Modo Gashe means well of Gashe in Borana. We are heading to Wajir and have to go through Isiolo County, but first we have to cross the river. Trying to put a number to how much water is passing here, Unezata Lipuka Kichwa. But the town itself hakuna maji. In fact, I took kuoga kwa sababu hakuwa na maji ya kutosha. Ama walikuataka tukuje kuoga hapa. This is definitely a problem of water. Lakini ndio haya maji. Ndio haya maji kumenyesha. And uh, I wish there was like a, a way to tap into this water. Nasikia wengi wanaenda na hii maji. Eh. Siende. Kuro imekata. Imekata? Imekata. Hapa na ugopa. Ama? Hmm? Tutumie hii. Tutumie hii. Haya basi ya nzisha hiyo. Wate ni jipani. Obviously, you, we, can't, we can't cross here. And, I'm, and this is the old road. So you can imagine, uh, whenever this lager was full of water, business couldn't transact normally. Bridges like this one are few in northeastern. In fact, after the Garissa one, I can't think of any other. During the wet season, the Modo River can flow continuously for days, disrupting trade and travel and putting lives at risk. A lot of lives and property have been lost as people attempt to make such dangerous crossings. Today, it is no longer a matter of life and death to cross the Modo River. Transport and communication have been sorted, but there is still a water problem. The town has no running water and even with an overflowing river, the residents still have to fetch water at the Modo. But the water is mixed with soil and sun. How can they use it? The residents here have an ingenious way of getting clean water. They dig near the banks and place containers in the sand. From here, they can scoop clear water that has been filtered by the sand. I never had thought, I never thought that we were going to have a lot of machine. But there's a lot of, there's method and there's science to this. Fascinating. There's enough water for everyone as long as Ukona BD. You can roll the jerry can or carry it on a donkey cart. However, it wasn't this easy a month ago. We take water for granted. Hapa, Modogashe, it hasn't rained for close to four years. 
Now, let, think about that. Some of these kids were called three years, four years, meaning that this month was the first time they ever saw rain. And we have been explained to that it was, it was a bit traumatic for them. When was the last time you went swimming? This young boy over here was four years ago. Four years ago. You can walk to the swimming pool any day, sometimes any time. You have swimming pools in your compound, your block, your home. Kulazma Wangoje. Farhat Bagdare and Farhat Zaide. We will manage to see our bishops on a billet. And her crop and I know what and took Bakurk beer again. Be our Hankur to the Shilit Melia. Or Tom Kilometer to the Magazine and Gurt in Antakana. A horse to your daughter win a good. I know her son in the mother, Sissy, I know Mana. I will hook her around. For a son of an angry. O Kusema Quaheri, Quakisomali in Tasemaj. Quaheri. It is time to move to our next destination, Habaswey. This should be easy, seeing as it is only 50 kilometers from Modogashe, right? The main highway to Habaswein has been cut off by the Wasonyiro River at Skanska. That leaves only one option. We have to use the Abakore route. It means going back towards Garissa, turning at Malim, then Shata Abak. The distance has increased four times from 50 to 200 kilometers. We get to enjoy the C81 during the day. It really is a good road. The speed limit is 100. But Kabla Ujaanza Kukimbia, please be careful as the recent rains have left their mark. The engineers must have designed this thinking about all sorts of occurrences that could happen. But Viloali Jenga Akua Kumenyesha for a very, very long time. And then Vile Maji Likuja, Bala Kufuata Ile plan initially they thought, Ikakuja Ikasema, no! Up ahead, more sections of the road have been washed away. I can be very discouraging, especially when it is the only paved road in this part of the county. It is, however, comforting to see the repair works already in progress. The water plants near Modogashe are full and the grass has sprouted. Along the highway, families are on the move heading home. Carrying all their belongings on carts and donkeys, these families have been traveling for days all the way from Tana River County. We observed um, mm. families mm. who are immigrating yeah. from their previous settlement where they went to in search of pasture and water during mm. the drought. They now returning back to their original grazing field mm. still we have not seen the livestock yeah they came on the cattle and the sheep. Mm -hmm. so most likely they are behind and they are coming also so this is what is called the madogashe peace declaration mm. is a peace declaration which governs all the pastoralist communities in this country mm. you see when there is drought people mm. accommodate each other Mm. But when it rains, everybody should get back to his grazing field. And so immediately the rains come. Yeah. Unajua. Unajua. Immediately you come and you Unajua. You're supposed to park and now start leaving. Yeah, you're yeah. Yeah. Yeah, going back. You yeah. respect. Yeah. Okay. For so you to come back tomorrow again. Yeah. Yeah. So oh yes, uh, yeah. your grace to you and the lady. Now up here in case we could use ponyesha or pandi ponyesha. Ah, one is that. One is that. Okay. Now the the, the goods mm. and the ships. Because of pastoralists coming together, they have been able to save some of their animals. 
This is another reason not to speed as it seems everyone is on the move with their livestock. Ngombe wewe. We get to Malim and make a left turn onto the loose surface road. decided to hold our own Garissa Safari Rally. It helps when those you are competing against don't know it. Then we get the first casualty of the road. A vehicle which ironically belongs to the road's authority has broken down. Hapa, you don't just pass people because it can happen to anyone. It is in the middle of the bush and you help where you can. They are okay and are waiting for a mechanic from Garissa. We continue and get more vehicles stuck. Bios are sakafuni za probox zimeshawapi hapa. There are also these two other trucks. We decide to help the probox not just because it is the right thing to do, but pia kuna vile walikuwa metufungia njia. Anyway, bora tu asaidie. It's not so bad. You can imagine if you're stuck here and it's dry. With water. These truck drivers they usually carry food, they carry you know elements to cook. So there's enough water. The other trucks have reached the bad point. Their assistants quickly gauge the conditions and deem them safe for the lorries to pass. <laughs> The most experienced driver Mwenyakoro Ju ndio huwa anaongoza convoy. They are heavy, carrying goods for Wajir, Mandera and beyond. Traveling together ensures that they can help each other along the way. As the saying goes, travel together and you will go farther. Like in on this day, we were doing badly on time and chose the saying, if you travel alone, you travel faster. Shida moja kusafiri peke yako ni you are not sure where it is safe to pass. When in doubt, scout the road first. Then, wale ambao walikuwa wanajua barabara wakatupita. Sita huko. Fata probox. Tumepita probox. Walikuwa wameona si. Wako na mbio sana. Tumewangotea alipo akatukuja tu akatupita. After driving for a while, we realize we are the only ones on the road. That could mean we are either very wise or otherwise. We soon realize ni otherwise. The road has been cut off and we missed our turn 4 kilometers ago. The pro box turns and is now ahead of us. We see the lorries coming and quickly discern where the turn is. We are back to position one. This is not a road but rather a bush track. Kumbe hukundiko magari yote yako. We soon get to the main road from Lagdera and find a long traffic jam of vehicles. The pro box somehow also makes it. Hundreds of travelers are stranded at this point and there is a traffic jam stretching over half a kilometer with tens of lorries stranded. Eh kilichofanyika hapa kwamba eh mvua imenyesha kwa wingi sana ambapo kwamba magari yameshindwa kupita njia hii. Njia imekuwa mbovu sisi kama walimu ambao tulikuwa tunasafiri baada kufunga shule siku nne zilizo zilizo sali zilizopita tumepita hapa kwenda mbele lakini tumekwama kutoka wajia tukija hivi baada ya mvua kunyesha kwa ukali zaidi these buses operate the longest route in Kenya it is 1000 kilometers from Nairobi to Mandera and when it rains the journey becomes even longer as they have to go through such routes E, magari hapa yalishindwa kupita mm. kwa ajili ya matope. Mm. Alafu jambo jingine mm. e, inaonekana wazi kwamba baada mvua hii kunyesha mm. hii ni thibitisho kwamba e, katika 
eh, jimbo la eh, northeastern northeastern mm. counties mm. ina inadhibitisha kwamba hakuna njia za kutosha mm. njia nzuri hazipatikani mm. tumekaa hapa kuanzia saa moja asubuhi mm. tumekaa tumetama kitu hapa saa vile barabara niko hivi maisha imekuwaaje eh venye nilingei basi mimi nimesema hata nime give up life mm. nenda class kuna exam ilikuwa anafanya date 18 imenipita hata kuna mama hapa jana imekuwa mgonjwa ime hakuna Mm. I think we should just name this episode, this road, this unnamed road. Kwa sababu, the things that we have seen uh, and the challenges that we have encountered. Na sisi tumekuja tu tuende. No, na tumekuja adventure. These are people who have to use this route to get from point A to point B. Uh, kuna wenye wanaenda exam. Kwa mshua kuna wenye wakona mikutano tofauti. We successfully crossed the flood waters but now face another challenge. This part of Garissa has black cotton soil and it is wet. Yeah. The hundreds of lorries using the road have dug deep trenches and now only one of them can cross at a time from both sides. The truck drivers are very patient now akona umoja. No one overlaps and each one patiently waits for their turn to cross. As such, even in this chaos, there is order. This bus tried to drive in the bush and got stuck. The tractor that came to rescue it got stuck as well. They have been here for several days now. Hey, hapa ni kubaya. A bigger bulldozer from Wajir County has come to save the day. Our Pro Box friends try to use the bush truck and are now stuck too. There is no vehicle that has come to their aid as other motorists fear getting stuck. Pushing has not helped and everyone has left. You never leave someone behind ata kama ni pro box and they are not blocking you. Tumetoka mbali nao kwa hivyo wacha tu tuwasaidie. Wacha. The polythin rope doesn't work and Nurdin oh. finds a metal rope. It is now 16 minutes to 5. We had anticipated that by now tungekuwa wajia uh, but unajua ukiwa hapa mahali na uone people in need. Hapa nime notice watu hawachani. Wa so we are here trying to help our fellow competitor, Probox. Hopefully, Teresa Kuiskuma. This too does not work. As we are trying to help our friends, the last loaded lorry in the convoy makes it through and the chain becomes available. We find ourselves in a thorny situation. We are now caught in a dilemma. We want to help the pro box, but the rope keeps snapping and it is getting dark. All the trucks have left and we don't want to be the last ones on this road. Tumejaribu. So maybe hii wacha tuone hii. Hii ki humana. Ndio tuta. Tujaribu one more time eh. Alafu tabidi sisi pia tuanze kuenda. So unless I muite ule ule mtu wa tractor Yeah. Oh. 
I'm glad to be here. 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 We are back on the road and quickly catch up with the lorries. Our three trucks are now traveling in this larger convoy. We make it to shutter a buck, which means five acacias in English. The black cotton is soaked and has claimed many vehicles. Even a double cab is among the victims. We learn it has been stuck here for two days. Hapa ni kama tumefika end of the road. We have come too far to take a rest or give up. And with Habaswain so close, we are not turning back. We listen to the advice to stick to the road and avoid the bush. It works and we are back on a sandy surface. We meet the Wajir County Ambulance transporting the sick to the hospital. Hata kwa hii barabara mbaya lazima wagonjwa wasafiri. We get a beautiful sunset in the evening. Then more stuck vehicles appear which we successfully pass. From the whole shutter back convoy, we are now the ones at the front and are feeling upbeat. As the sun is going down, another light comes on that causes distress. The battery isn't charging. We are in the middle of nowhere. The road is very bad and it is dark. The challenge is uh, our alternator is not working. I've just learned that. That, that means that our lights, once battery issue, uh, lights it as in Ica. And we are not, we're not in Abbas. In fact, we have this Abakoro, and then another one, and then Abbaswen. So uh, we need to make a decision on where we're going to stay. We really wanted to get to Abbaswen because our accommodation last time wasn't great, uh, but safety first, obviously. So not too excited about that, but it's the adventure. It's the adventure. We are now caught in a race with time as we have to reach a town or center before we run out of power and lose the lights. We still have to go through several pools. We get to the Banyale and decide the battery can make it, so we continue with our journey. We finally get to Habasway. A journey that would have taken less than an hour to cover the 50 km from Modogashe has become a 200 km obstacle course. Anyway, bora to mefika salam. Hapa kuna AC, a good bed and indoor plumbing. Last week we covered the longest 20 journey ever for us. We traveled from Wajir to Gurar, Bute, Moyale, and spent the night in Masabit, a distance of about 600 kilometers. We crossed the Turbi Desert at night, lakini kwa vile tunajua mgependa kuona vile kuna kaa, this is it. So kuna vile part of this land is really a desert. And that is how we ended up in Masabit town, which by the way, to be clear, is not part of Northeastern. 
Masabit and Isiolo counties make up what was formerly Eastern Province. Fatigue. Fatigue. Le kana ni chapa. Kini angala ulo ni ala poa. Ola ni kona nguvu kiasi. Tratembea poa. Na shukuru mungu ni Sunday. Tenda ki marathon. Kama kipchoge. Aya sawa basi tuishie. Tenda. Tenda. The dominant communities here are not Somalis but are mainly Horana, Gabra, Rendile, Burji, Samburu, El Molo, and others. Kunawale Munafikiria, they are all the same people, but they are not. Even amongst the Somalis, there is diversity. As I got to learn when Nurdin was asking for directions in Gurar. Language barrier. So lakini ni msomali. Huo ni msomali. But anaongea kiborana. Anaongea kiborana. So si wa Somali wote wanaongea Kisomali. Not all Somali speak Somali. Hebu nieleze. Because um, among the Somali communities we have mm. two communities mm. who are neighbors with the Borana. Mm. So in terms of the language and in even some part mm -hmm. of their cultures yeah. they are assimilated to the Borana oh, because Burana. of yeah. staying around the Borana, yeah. grazing, sharing yeah. grazing field with the Borana. Yeah. They are also intermarried with the Borana. Yeah. So wame chukua lugha ya Borana. Mm. Sasa waka develop ngini inaitwa Gerri. Yeah. It's not a Borana lakini vile inatamoka ni kidogo tafauti. Yeah. Lakini wao kwa wao wao wanaelewana. Yeah. So nika Lakini wao Somali wengine ni... hawaelewani. Masabit town is at an altitude of 1350 meters and is located on Mount Masabit whose peak is at 1700 meters. Because of this the area has a closed canopy forest. This is the location of Masabit National Park. Remember the Skanska giraffe that was stuck? We have an update. It was rescued. Sisi kwa nafikiria ni ilikuwa imekwama juu ya matope. But what actually happened? Likwe me ogopa ju it was attacked by a lion and that that ka small island was the only place it felt safe however we let to report uh, what were KWS they were able to get to it and it was rescued so good news and uh, we came to learn about it here up at Masabit National Park uh Uko falls under cuz this is the northeastern conservation the headquarters has been here and so we got the news here so yeah all is well that ends well we had planned to do a story on Masabit National Park but after our journey we decided to postpone it Masabit is very big and requires a series of its own nevertheless tutakupatia kionjo as we drive through Masabit National Park we decided to use this route back to Nairobi as this way we will not pass the same route twice so that I can keep on discovering Napia yo barabara ya Shatabak ilikuwa inatisha Mambo ya barabara na kukwama ejeisha The northern area also has thick forests. As we saw, Garissa has a 7% forest cover, which is over 3,000 square kilometers. That meant that the forest cover in Garissa is the same size as Homa Bay County. Wajir, which has the lowest cover of the three northeastern counties, has more forest cover than Busia, Migori, and Siaya. The total forest cover in Wajir is the size of the entire Kirinyaga County. Northeastern is not a desert as some people think. Kwaalem nasema ni desert, hizi ni sand dunes are green. All along Nurdin has been our guide, but this is an area he has never visited before. Now this is an Mahali Nilizoya and Nimeishi, the flat land. 
Sasa hapa nikiwa wacho kwa hizi mlima mlima Itakuwa tricky sana kwa pata hizi mlima Itakuwa riki heko sana Kwangu kwangu hini Mbosayo Mbosayo hini While it is a spectacle to see elephants in Wajir In Masabit they are very common We were hoping to see them at the elephant pool deep in the forest, but no. Wakubwa walisema hawakuji. Kukinyasha huwa ni ngumu kuwaona wanyama kwa mbuga. We see some bush bugs, but they disappear. The park has a number of animals, lakini leo ikupitia tu. Mandera and Garissa have national parks and reserves. Wajiri is yet to have one despite the many animals found there. We get to what has been described as the jewel of the north, Lake Paradise. The water levels are still low despite the recent rains. The only time there seems to be large bodies is when it rains. That is the only time the northern children enjoy swimming. Sometimes it takes years before it rains. Sadly because of this, Many of them, especially boys, are swept away or drowned in dams during the wet season. Even in a large town like Wajir, there are no swimming pools and the children have to wait for the rains. In Wajir, tuliona wakati wingine inabidi polisi wa wazuie kuogelea ndiyo wasizame. Pengine tukijaribu kuajengea swimming pools so that they don't miss out or risk their lives unnecessarily. Ewefueko. Ewefueko, kwetu ni wapi? Ewefueko. Ewefueko. Vile wekeza meanzo kuongena ndege. I think it is time to move on. This forest is very thick. It looks very healthy. It feels very healthy. The air feels healthy. The road is very nice. Hii ata na garindogo uneza kuja. And that's not an exaggeration. Wame level vizuri. It feels very organized. Um, not that you are mepanga miti, but from the gate and how we've been received, this is an untapped gem for many of us because many of us haven't traveled to these places. So make it a point to come. This is this is accessible and it's right there in your own country. So kuja, this is amazing. A quick detour through the park ends quickly, and we are back on the A2. On this route, see your pro box na land cruiser, but buses and shuttles. Ata vits. I believe there is hope for the roads in northeastern, as what used to be one of the worst roads is now, according to me, the best in Kenya. Jora, support your answer. It starts wide as thicker road in Nairobi. Then it is a dual carriageway that cuts across Machakos and Moranga counties. It then rises to 2,600 meters above sea level in Timau, at the foot of Mount Kenya. It passes Masabit, then gets to the Turbi Desert, which has long straight sections that can be up to 10 kilometers long. Hapa Barabara ni kama ni yako peke yako, yani Barabara. Then it widens as you start to climb towards Moyale and ends as a dual carriageway. 780 kilometers of good, secure road. This is a better alternative route to Northern Wajir kama unataka kuenda Burtelewa. Najua wengi wenyu uwa mkisikia haya maeneo mnafikiria tu mashambulizi. Also many were surprised that we were traveling to all these places without a security escort. We didn't need it because all these places are safe. Ata usiku the main highways are secure. If there's any challenge, the police manning the various roadblocks will let you know. The local people are welcoming and other communities living here feel safe. It is true that there have been cases of attacks, but most of them are isolated and happen far from the major population centers. The major towns of Wajir and Garissa are far from the border with Somalia where many of the attacks happen. 
During our entire 2000 km journey we never at any moment felt at threat. Kwa dunia ni hakuna mahali pasuri na hakuna mahali pambaya kama mahali hapo popote pana isimu wanandamu. Hakuna mahali pasuri na hakuna mahali pambaya. Maana kwa hiyo ya Kenya kusikia mahali kuna isi watu na wanaishi. Kwa hiyo si kumbaya hata wewe ukienda utatoboa hivyo wanatoboa. Ndio. Back on the A2, which by the way, is safe for travel, we are now getting to one of the most photographed features on this road, the sacred Samburu Mountain Ololokwe. So behind me is my old friend. Now we are friends. It was uh, very dry, so there was no vegetation. I had to stop here and take a photo of the and the I'm going to go to green, my daddy sana. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to one day, I'm going to go to my fans. Long, 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 Hata upite hapa marangapi, sidhani unaweza choka na hivyo. Kwa sisi watu wa kusafiri, it is a scenery that we get to enjoy, but for the pastoralist communities, it is different. Don't get me wrong, they enjoy the view, but they are more interested in the grass. After the rains, it is a time of rejoicing. Life is good. Animals that had moved far from home are coming back which means there is a lot of milk. I have seen a people who are resilient. Climate change has made it more difficult as there are now prolonged droughts. The lifestyle of moving from place to place has ensured their survival. But now the journeys away from home, unfortunately, are becoming longer. It is interesting how the pastoralist communities in this region have come up with a system like the Modogashi Accord, which reduces causes of conflict during the drought. Despite these challenges, the people love it here. It is, after all, their home. We are getting to Archer's Post, the crossing point of the Ewasonyiro River. So what you're seeing here is Ewasonyiro, and Ewasonyiro means brown waters, I'm a reddish water. I am Ajay Metoka, all the way from Abadeas. Right now we are at the border uh, of Isiolo and Samburu, Natenda, all the way in Drainapo, Abasweni in Wajia County. This area has struggled with water, but as you can see, kuna majimengi. You could even say a lot of water is going to waste. As we saw earlier in Habaswain, the Ewaso Nyiro deposits the water and soils on a big chunk of land. This is very fertile land that has the potential for huge commercial farming. There's a lot of water that passes through the counties during the wet season. Northeastern is mainly flat, and this is not suitable land to build a dam. But you know which place is hilly and is suitable for building a mega dam? Bute. The land here is hilly. The government plans to construct a mega dam here. If this plan is successful, then most of this water that passes through Lag Boho will be harnessed. Wajir County has a lot of land. At 56,000 square kilometers, it is bigger than Rwanda and Burundi put together. This water can be used for agriculture and other domestic purposes. They can even grow fodder for the livestock. Many people are already taking the initiative to practice agriculture. 
The impact of drought, increasing insecurity and famine has led to a growing emergence of experimentation with alternative means of livelihood. Irrigation schemes have now been set up in several parts of the county and today the community is embracing farming too as a way of building resilience. It is starting to rain. Na kuna vile dirisha moja haipandishi. Our journey has had its fair share of challenges. Nurdin got sick, but we got a place in Modogashe and fixed him up. Gari peka kwa gonjwa. Tukapata garage ikatengenezwa. Wengine wenyu huwa mnajiuliza na je gari kiaribika nikiwa kwa safari huko? Kuna fundi na wamehitimu watakutengenezea gari usijali. Kuna safari ambayo inakuanga nywe ni kupambana na shida ukienda. Eventually hata mvua huacha. <laughs> Nurdin is passing at the foot of Mount Kenya for the first time. <laughs> Unfortunately, the clouds have covered the mountain, so he will have to come back on another day. Our northeastern trip has turned out to be one of the best we've ever had. I saw sorry gift. Nasiban. Hat sene ni seme. Ma hat sene tu asante sana. Asante sana bro. Akaribu. Asante sana asante bana team TV. Kia ina na kai. <laughs> this is a region that is misunderstood by many. Northeastern is beautiful, like other parts of Kenya. The roads may be rough, but the hearts are soft. <laughs> the people are warm and welcoming. The plains are full of wildlife. And the landscape is breathtaking. Hapa lazima turudi na wakati huo tutafika hadi Mandera. We have done 2000 kilometers on road and that is a lot of time. That means we can listen to all kinds of music. Not leaving out Somali rap. Mefika, mefanya 2130 kilometers tangu tuanze. Je! Hi. Yeah, je. Je na litu hepa? No. <laughs> Next time on Twende, we start a new adventure to reflect on the weather. We are going to a cold place. Okay, I get it. More tea. Lakini, what we are western are complain. I come out of complain, but the owner complain, Nini. Here we are with tea. The waters are teeming with fish and the forests have elephants. <laughs>
the biggest animal is an elephant. So the advantage also of going in a group, ni most likely si wewe utashikwa, ni mwingine. So si baki nyuma, karibia, patia wengine lana. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, quiet. This is what you call moo. Ah, sorry. Ah. The tracks are overgrown with vegetation and I feel like an early explorer. Imagine up a cooking. We're so lucky. We may answer Kinyasha. I'm any luck. I'm any bad luck. Apana, ni hike. And we visit the tallest waterfall I have ever been to. Last year we visited Busia and got to the mouth of the Nzoia. The river with the second highest volume of water in Kenya. Today would like to take you where it all begins in this prequel episode. We will follow this 257 kilometer long river that traverses six western counties from Elgeo Marakwet, Transoya, Goma, Kakamega, Siaya and finally Busia where it drains into Lake Victoria. Our journey starts in the county which gives the river its name, Trans Zoya. It is early morning in Kitale and it is one of those days. Sikunjema wonekana subuhi. Kitale has this beautiful vibe in the morning. It is like waking up in the middle of a forest. We take the C48 or the Kitale Cherangani Road. Like most rural C class roads, it has light traffic and it is in good condition. It also has long straight stretches which would make some of you want to speed. Atusemi <laughs> watu Subaru. Watch out for the bumps that are yet to be marked. Uzuri sio zile mbaya na pia kuna zile <laughs> Rumble strips. Like in why should you speed? It is early morning, the air is clean, the environment is green and clean. Just put nice relaxing music and enjoy the drive. 30 kilometers from Kitale is the Kachibora Center where we take the new D-Class road. We start our climb up to Kapcharo. This road is new and the markings are still very clear. Bums in on Ekana Vizuri Pier. Because we are going up, the road has great views of the valleys below. Never been here. First time here. This is amazing. I'm Aji Ashiko. Refreshing, beautiful sceneries. Kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. Just look at those hills. One or two green. Different types of trees. Ukisema hmm? unaenda getaway. Kuja kwa hii barabara. Hafu kuna kabaridi. Kuna joto na baridi. Hawizi tembea tu bear chest. This part of Transoya is very cosmopolitan with different communities calling this place home. You know, sometimes, eh? I'm afraid to see mommy who enjoy view. Just look at this. How many times do you get to see something like this? Hmm? Ah! 
but also <laughs> uko eh careful le bwana yo ai hata ni vizuri sijakaa chini hata je yeye anakaa hizi look at that so be very careful even as you enjoy the views uh, you could be stepping on someone else's home or footpath na utakipata hao wanakaa kali sana so kabla kuanza kuweka picnic pekuwa pekuwa usije ukawa sinema huku mashambani the main economic activity in this rural part of Transoya is agriculture hawa ndio wanatuisha even in a severe drought this place is still green and producing a lot of food Habari yako? Nzuri. Sasa hii hii sasa nini unafanya? Ninapiga piga maharagwe. Eh? Eh. Naweza jaribu? Eh, jaribu. Being from the city, I had never participated in bean threshing and I'm eager to learn. Unaigonga na nguvu ama kidogo tu? Ah, pole pole tu. Pole pole? Eh. Oh. Naweza tumia hii? Eh, tumia hiyo. Na hii imetoka shamba. Eh hii imetoka shamba. Mm. Eh yeah, unachapa tu pole pole. Ukichapa na nguvu itapasuka. Mm. Eh. Yeah. Na nikuulize. Yeah. So hapo ukulima kuna hii sasa ni eh, maragwe, si ndio? Mm. So ukulima ni maragwe na nini na nini? Maragwe? Eh. Uh-huh. Mahindi. Maragwe mahindi? Eh. Yeah. Eh. Uh. Eh. Na hapa pala itwa aje? Kiptoi. Kiptoi. Eh. Hiyo kiptoi inamaanisha nini? Kiptoi ni mchwa. Mchwa. Eh. O toi ni mchwa ama kiptoi yote ni mchwa. Yaani hiyo eh. toi. Toi eh. ni mchwa. Eh. Oh. Mm. Na nime 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 nimekuja kugundua kip ni mvulana, chep mm. ni msichana. Eh. So ni mchwa mvulana. Eh. Kiptoi. <laughs> kiptoi. <laughs> kiptoi. <laughs> mvulana. Sasa nilikuwa nataka kuliza hii barabara mm. ilitengenezwa lini imesaidia na kulikuwa vipi hapo awali Hapo awali eh. ilikuwa mbaya sana mm-hmm. kama shamba eh. na ilikuwa hata kari ya ipiti hata kusafirisha pita kwenda soko ilikuwa ngumu Sasa kama hii sasa ungeweza eh. kusafirisha Singe singeweza kusafirisha mm. sababu magari ilikuwa ipiti eh. Lakini saa hii tunafurahi sana. Yeah. Barabara ni rahisi kusafirisha chakula kwenda soko. Uh-huh. Ni rahisi hata watoto kwenda shuleni. Yeah. Imetusaidia sana. So hata hata imekata muda wa mm. kufikisha bidhaa na kufika shule. Eh yeah, hata transport saa hii mm. yeah, si mbaya. Kwa hivyo imesaidia. Imetusaidia. Biashara imepanda ama imekuwa aje sasa? Biashara iko juu. Eh, imepanda imepanda mm. ah, naona kuna stima na barabara imetengenezwa ni nini bado haijafika hapa maji tunatoa mbali eh. paka kwa mtoni huko chini mm-hmm. ama tuende makisima huko chini ni mbali sana eh. mm. nafurahi kuishi huko eh nafurahi eh mm. hata na mashida ya kukosa maji mm. singetaka kuishi kwingine ni maji tu tunaomba eh. Eh. lakini maji ikija hiyo eh. tu ndio shida peke yeah. yake. Ndipo tapa hewa ni mzuri. Unajua mm, mimi nimetoka Nairobi. Mm. Hewa ikwangi hivi. Mm. Eh, ikwangi. Mm. Watu usema uwezi kukula barabara but for the residents in this part of Transoya, the road helps them earn a living. Hata mnaona kwa hiyo lamu sasa naona wakati mwingi pikipiki hapa ndio iko busy sana kushinda gari. Hapa yeah, sisi watu wa boda ndio tunafanya yeah. vizuri kwa hii barabara sana. Yeah. Na tumefurahia pia maisha. Ukiangalia hata saa hii hapa yeah. unaona pikipiki inabita, ingine imebeba maziwa, mm-hmm. ingine imebeba viasi, mm-hmm. ingine imebeba mboga. Unaona mm-hmm. nyanya? Pia nyanya na yeah. pikipiki pia hata inatoka kitale yeah. na nyanya paka kapchorop toka kitale hadi kapchorop. Ah kapchorop imetuletea nyanya pia. Hiyo mm-hmm. tu bado ni pikipiki. Hata pale ndani ndani ambayo mbona bonde hiyo sehemu ambayo unaona inaingia yeah. ndani kwa kutoa yeah. msigo pale ndani bado ni pikipiki. Yeah. So pikipiki katika maeneo hayo ndio imefanya kazi nzuri sana. Na nikulize wanatoa nyanya kitale. Yeah. Kuna kuna mazao yanatolewa huko yanapelekwa huko. Sisi pia naye katika maeneo haya ya kapchorop. Yeah. Tuko na viazi, mm. tuko na mboga. Mm natoka pande pia tunapeleka huko tu. Viasi kienda huko pia wanatuletea nyanya e. na vitu ambavyo hakuna maeneo ya kachoropo. So sasa kama hizi zimebeba nini? Hizi pikipiki ambazo unaona zinabita hapo e. au ni wafanyabiashara wanaenda kuusa nguo pale kachoropo. 
nguo hao wametoka wametoka Transoya wanaingia upande wa Elgio Market pia eh, wanaenda kuuza wana soko so hii barabara inaenda Elgio Market inaenda paka Elgio Market ya yeah. trucks from Kitale also come for farm produce and now farmers here have access to more markets hii view ni tamu sana. Yeah. Ukiendesha boda eh, na ama pikipiki, wewe enjoy hii view ama ushazoea? Mimi nishazoea. Eh. Juu wakati lam mmekuja hapa tumefurahia maisha yamekuwa rahisi kidogo. Eh. Eh. Juu pikipiki yangu hata pia iharibiki sana. Eh. Ah, nimesoea ni lam, hii lam imetusaidia sana. Na je view, unaona sasa kaa mimi kutoka Nairobi sio nangi hivi. Unaona yeah. vile kuna milima, kuna miti kuna Eh yeah. inakasupu sana. Wewe anga unaenjoy ama Ah tunaenjoy sababu si ni wasaliwa huku, yeah. tumesoya huku, huku tunasaingia huko hata nikipeleka wewe na boda pako huko tashangaa. Yeah. Lakini sisi tunabita tupole pole tumesoya. Ninaona umevaa jacket sijui ngapi. Najua ni kali. Mm. Kwani umevaa ngapi sasa? Mm, katika maeneo hii yetu yeah. ama yeah. area yetu yeah. area ya capture up. Hapa yeah. ni baridi bwana, brother. Oh ni baridi. Ni baridi sasa lazima ujipanga lemon ya pia yeah. tunaamka mapema kuraukia nayo unajua huko ni baridi. Yeah. Area sio jua sio kali sana. Sio kali baridi sana. baridi. Ndipo unaona nimejipanga. Nimefanya ma jacket kama tatu na mnai brother. Jacket ni tatu. Jacket ni tatu. Na, na shati ni moja bado fisti. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> na sweater. <laughs> na sweater. Naona sadi yeah. sweater. Sweater ni ngapi? Sweater ni kama pia mbili hivi. Ah. Yeah. Eh, ah. Best shati sweta mbili yeah. jacket tatu ya yeah, ndio sasa brother <laughs> <laughs> na trouser ama ni moja uh, long pia niko na long mbili ndani ah eh, ni kujipanga brother so ukiona hizo boda boda kwa barabara waheshimu these are the people facilitating most of the rural gdp also as you eat your grains there is a good chance it was transported on a boda boda As you enter Capture Rock, the road has an exciting winding course. Hii ni ile kwa Kiswahili tunapenda kuita nyoka nyoka. It is here we cross the border to the county of Elgeyo, Marakwet. 47 kilometers from Kitale town, we find Capture Rock Forest, the birthplace of the Nzoia River. Elgeyo Marakwet County ranks number 2 in the forest cover in the country. What makes the forest cover here special is that most of the trees in this county are indigenous. I'm sure you're wondering which county is number 1 in the forest cover. The county with the highest forest cover is Nyeri County at 40%. Now that we are on this subject, I'm sure you would also want to know the county on the other end. That would be Siaya County at 0.6%. So 38% of all the land mass in Elgeyo Marakwet is covered in indigenous forest. Sadly, most of the time, this is not what makes it to the news about this beautiful county. Mtazamaji wa tuatatu wamefariki wakiwemo afisa mmoja wa akiba na wezi wawili wa mifugo katika mashambulizi yaliyofanyika kwenye eneo la Kaben County Elgeyo Marakwet. Four people have been killed in Tot area in Elgeyo Marakwet County. Before you say that you are not setting foot here, it is good to know that most of El Geo Marakwet is actually peaceful except for some parts of the border near the Kerio Valley. Last time we visited the county, we drove in the middle of the Embo Boot Forest. It was one of the best forest drives I had ever experienced. This forest is the source of the Embo Boot and Aror rivers which end up in Lake Turkana This is key to our survival in the country as these forests are our water towers providing millions of people livestock and wildlife with clean drinking water
On the other side of the county, another river is born in another forest. This one, though, will head south into the densely populated western side of the country. I have been to the end of the Nzoia River. This is the farthest source of the Nzoia River. So in your origin story, yeah, that episode. Alafu <laughs> ukiangalia, we were taught that, uh, actually here, upper Twende, we were taught that when a tree has moss, then it's a healthy forest. And you can see almost, almost every tree. Kito mwone kitu. In and Adiu Kundani. Nona. I mean, we are right next to the road, but you can still be drowned by the sounds of the forest. Birds, crickets. Water and your thoughts. Bariako, Zuri San. Tasa, I imagine it on Nini and Apa Panaito. Apa? I imagine it to a chip kite it, chip kite it, chip kite it, chip kite it. Naya Maji, Yana Toka, E forest, 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 E E, walikawa walikawanyika kitambo eh, eh. walikuwa wengi upande huu eh, lakini wakati eh, wazungu walikuja eh. ukawa na ile boundaries mm, mm. kuna wengine walipelekwa upande wa West Pokot mm -hmm. wengine wakabaki huku mm. wengine wakaenda wakaelekea njia ya Keyo mm. sasa amwalo wenye wamepaki hapa eh. ni wachache we, na wewe ni kwa kalenjini wewe ni mimi ni mimi ni msangweri Oh, you're somewhere. Oh, okay. Somewhere. Oh, boy, you're rare. You're more than. 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 Oh, kaitit ni baridi. Baridi. Haya maji, unafiona, ni baridi sana. Ni baridi? Ni baridi sana. Nikishika sa inta isikia... Unaeza kufreeze. Unaeza kufreeze. Ye. He. He. Maji ni baridi kabisa. He. So, kaitit ni baridi sana. Baridi sana. Na chep, na keep, sasa... Inakuanga tofauti. Chep. Chep ni kwa wakale njini wanapatia jina wasichana. Aha. Chep kaitit. Chep kaitit. So chep ni msichana, kip ni mbala. Sasa unajua, unajua mto ama maji ya na usiishu wana wamama. Kwa sababu sana, sana hao wanatumia maji. Hao ni uwa wanaenda mto. So even local languages have gender for nouns. Hey, how does it look complex? In this house, he imagine in a in a in a way come a river Zoya. Is it the only source here in Zoya? Apana. Yeah. Apana. Okay. Kuna mitos ingine. Dogo dogo. Oh, dogo dogo. Yeah. Kuna dogo dogo. Uh huh. Kama ya chebai. Hmm. Kuna ni na toka chere ranga chebaro rwa rwa duko. Uh huh. Yeah. Capture Up Forest is at the border of three counties and depending on the community, the forest goes by different names. It is not by accident that Elgeo Marakwet has one of the biggest forest covers in Kenya. Wasangweru, 
ni watu ambao ni watu wa kuwinda. Oh, watu wa kuwinda. Eh, yeah. no, ni watu wa kutafuta asali. Mm. Sasa wa, wamechunga msitu yao. Mm. Wamechunga msitu yao. Yeah. Msitu yao ijaripiwa. Ndio unaona hata maji, mm. haya maji ni safi. Mm. Eh, ijaripiwa hii maji. Yeah. Inatoka eh, msituni huko ndani. Yeah. Sasa hapa hapa Sengwere, mm. sasa ni wa Sengwere pekee na kama kuna jamii wengine ambao huanga na kaa huko. Eh, kwa sasa kwa sasa mm. kuna jamii ambayo wamekuja yeah. kuna jamii wamekuja yeah. eh, kama wa Marakwet yeah. kama kwa sababu kuna mji yeah. baiko inaitwa Kapcherwa baiko hapa yeah. karibu hasa yeah. watu wameingia hapa karibu yeah. hata tumeenda mari nawa yeah. and ndio unaona yeah. hata jamii karibu ina ina inapotea ina, ina kidogo inapotea ina 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 kwa sababu ya sile jamii zingine yenye walikuja hapa this water has not passed through any settlement and is very clean. But don't take my word for it. It is time to put my mouth where the water is. Aya maji vile umesema ni masafi. Eh? Wewe unaweza kunywa? Eh, naweza kunywa maji safi sana. Kunywa. Wewe unaweza kunywa? Tunaweza kunywa? Eh, tunaweza kunywa haya maji. Aya, so we, ni, ni onesha. Unajua <laughs> mwenyeji ndio atanionesha vile. <laughs> Maji safi sana. Eh. Maji, ni maji safi sana. Cha ni kuja hapo ni kunywe. Basi. Eh. Nani tamu? Ah. It is hard to imagine that this small river will flow for over 200 kilometers to Lake Victoria and go from this to this. It has been an exciting journey to capture up forest. I have seen how the people in this rural part of Transoya are benefiting from the new road. I got to meet Asengwer and learn something about this minority community. And I got to drink from the Nzoya near the source. During the cold season, Madhioya is usually cloudy and covered by mist. Today is an exception as the valleys are bright and clear. So up and we are about to start our, our hike in the forest. Na kulikuwa na debate. Unaona vile kuna jua. You know, I was wondering whether ni bebe jacket ama not. But I was anything could happen there. I was like, I'm stranded, I'm like, I'm lost. I was like, I'm 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 So, we are armed. This mountain range is 160 kilometers long, covering the counties of Moranga, Nyeri, Kiambu, Nyandarwa, and Laikipia. Because of its size and dense vegetation, it is one of the country's most important water towers. The name Abadeas was given in honor of a certain lord over the Ukomaju, Alkwa Abadea, in 1884. The locals are Panatambuas, Juyabanini, Abahua, Tabahuea. They call the mountain Nyandarwa. It was one of the places where the Mau Mau would hide and launch their attacks. The forest cover stretches into the horizon. Apa, mtuwa kijificha, wezi muona. Our hike is starting at Kiamaturi where the North Madhioya exits the Abadea forest. One of the reasons tea is popular here is because it is the only crop that farmers near the forest could grow and not have problems with the wakubwa. Wakubwa hapa ni ndovu. 
Any other crop other than tea would see the elephants from the forest pay you a visit for their share. Today it is different as there is a barrier. This fence is quite important because in Azuia wanyamapori wa Vukeivi na pia binadamu kusa kufanya biashara ya agriculture huko ndani. So in a, in Azuia uh, your human wildlife conflict but siku hizi watu wanasema coexistence or rather it enhances the coexistence. Na watu wengi wanauliza sasa hii hii kampuni inafanyanga nini? Hii by the was donated by Nation Media Group. So sunaona kuna tuna tunaongea na tunatenda. <laughs> goja ngoja ngoja alafu please ukikuja hapa usishike kitu. Ah! Uh, uh, please usijari, usijaribu. To get to the starting point we have to cross the Madhioya where we get our first glance of the wildlife. The African black ducks are shy and fly off deeper into the forest. You know you are in the uh, in a uh, windward side. Yeah. So river zote yeah, yeah. zinatoka ipande. Oh. Yeah, we are in, we are in a uh, windward side. Na hii hapa ni spring, si ndio? This is a spring. Yeah. In Abadea yeah. there are so many springs. This one of spring. Yeah. Uh, at the waterfall, yeah. that Katago waterfall, yeah. that even that, even yeah, that one is spring. Zote zina join. Kwa river zina inakuwa moja. We have chosen a short hike that is 14 kilometers and will take us to Gatango Falls. The hike starts with a gentle incline to warm us up. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go further, go together. But there's also another advantage. Unajua hapa, the biggest animal is an elephant. So the advantage also of going in a group ni most likely si wewe utashikwa ni mwingine so si baki nyuma karibia patia wengine lahana ngoja ngoja mimi sitaki kuwa peke yangu The trees prevent you from seeing the steep gradient which I think is a good thing because ukiona kule tunapanda unaweza kata tamaa This is the beauty of the abadeas there's no monotony in the plant species after a short distance the vegetation changes into something new Hapa kama wewe ni mtu wa botany this is heaven. Na watu wengine husema ti hatuna mafans kwengi. Ona hadi Moranga ametungojea. Niaje? Wow. Double and tundra. Mbona hiyo? Fujuvu ni fun. Okay. I've noticed something that uh, if you're not careful utatembea tu ukiangalia chini and you miss out on all the beauty. Uh, this is the first time to meet him in such a thick forest and I'm so appreciative. And I want to take it all in. Saki kumis. All your senses are excited on this hike. Birds are a bit hard to spot in the forest but you can use your ears to identify them. That is the African Oriole. We soon get to an opening. Wow, wow, wow. Hii nakaka paradise. Unajua vile kwa zile movie mnatembea mnatembea alafu mnaona ki expansion hivi. Hey, check your picture. The view of the falls from a distance gives us the motivation we need to proceed. We are fortunate that there is no fog and the falls are in clear view. But we get the signs that we want alone. Paradiso iko na wenyewe na hawako mbali. Luckily or unluckily, uh, depending on how you want to see it, uh, we have not met an elephant. But there is evidence here that ndovu wako, 
Yeah. Dovu wako Moranga. Hiyo ni ndovu alikuwa tu anatafuta ile misisi. Oh. Ile Aizon ya Pang. Yeah. Juu hiyo uanga yeah. ni medicine. Yeah. Kwa wao. Yaani wao ina, inawasaidia hmm. kutoa minyoo. Oh. So after sasa inajua inatoka ina, ina, ina hii area hii yeah. lazima iwe imekula ime hizi isom iso... iweze kuenda ile ngambo nyingine oh, okay. so inaisaidia sana yeah. juu inaweza kukaa hapo kukaa miaka mbili haijarudi si this side so oh. on the other side haitapata uh, fun easy on kama vile si uambiwa dawa ya minyoo unachukua after three months after three sasa months. on after two years two years wanaenda oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. In the previous week, the guides had to turn back with a group of hikers at this point as the mist was very thick and there was a herd of elephants blocking their way. Kwa hivyo ndovu wanakuja hapa kupata dawa, lakini pia kuna mmea mwingine huwa unawavutia binadamu. Ya berries? Ya berries. Unasikia? Na kalupu inakuja. Kuna pafi mzuri sana. Kwa hivyo wata kuna nukia mzuri. Hiyo harufu eh? So sasa hii area ndio unapenda? Hapa ndio unapenda sasa. Eh. Unasikia nikaa kutumarashi. Tumarashi sasa ukikuja asubuhi kama umechoka. Eh. Ku relax tuko tuna relax hapa chini ndio. Eh. Oh. Hapa hivyo tu. Na kuna wakati tuna relax. Eh. Unapoa tu. Unapoa. This plant that releases the pleasant scent in the morning only grows in the forest. Paul has unsuccessfully tried to grow it at home. So akitaka kufurahia yako kaarufu lazima kuja hapa kwa msitu. Siwezi kuambia vile inanukia lakini ukitaka kuja tembea upande huu. As we move further inside the vegetation becomes even thicker. If we didn't have our guides we wouldn't know where the track is. Apo <laughs> apo is the right of passage. Let's move on. Now I get to see what the panga is for. We soon get to understand why clearing the track is important as Frank falls into a hole that has been covered by the vegetation. Apa, you have to be very careful. He's okay. Kwa huu msafara wote kuna vile 70% ya watu wote walianguka. Everybody is sliding hapa. No, yeah, thank you. Eh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> no, no. Hapa cuz it's raining almost every day and there's water underneath. Hapa vegetation inashinda tu iki grow every day. So, leo unaweza clear in two days time or even in one day ndio hiyo na kwa sababu mimi sijui kazi wacha nipatie mimi wenyewe najua aende <laughs> as you can see we are walking in a single file it's not by choice uh, one is that lazima tungoje ikwe cleared because uh, the vegetation has grown but rona is stick ona so ukijifanya utaongea utatembea 2 by 2 bado itakuwa one we <laughs> it might seem like a bad thing that this track looks this wild and the vegetation keeps regrowing every time but when you think about it it means you get to experience a trail like our ancestors did and that it is a healthy forest Ni kama kila saa watu wakipita nature inafinya reset button for the next lot. On the other side it is easy to wander off from the main track and get lost in the forest. Hapo ukipotea inaweza kuwa ngumu kukupata kwa sababu huu msitu ni mkubwa. Because of this it is good to hike with an experienced guide who knows the trail well. An advantage of hiking in a rainforest is there is plenty of clean water. Just like the clean air, nature provides it for free. Very cool. Some sediment. But it actually tastes better. We get to the moorland where there is a large opening. Hapa ndio mto wa Madhioya unazaliwa. There are times nimekuwa karibu na elephant but see hivi unajua sasa ile tulikuwa amboseli 
But uh, for you who have not seen an elephant, watch any one. This is one footprint. Yeah? Abu? In fact, I think Kata Tuneza, Abu Kuja. I think Tuneza took his quiz, Tuneza Ongeza to Mgumoja to Apoeka. Look, number 10, Moja, na number 8, Mbili. Zinatoshe. <laughs> so, to them, Mgu elephant, ni 8, 6, 26. 26. In this zone, the vegetation changes to something else. The temperatures have changed, and this place looks extremely spooky. It, in fact, in a car like an alien world, Atta, it has the traditional alien color, which is green. And we know that because cartoons told us, and cartoons don't lie. This place is spooky. It's chilly. No wonder they call it Moo Land. Hey. Then to Nafika Huku Kwamiwa. Okay, ni bamboo. In and out the bamboo forest. In and out the bamboo forest. In and out. The bamboo forest, slow but sure, remix. This one here. Yeah. I get to see a bamboo yeah. fruit for the oh, first time. Hii tena inakaa kama ile fruit ile tuliona pale chini. Saviena. Saviena, eh. But siyo kila, siyo, siyo, siyo kila babu ina mea hii. Eh, koso kuna specific, eh. Eh, ya ni meameaga tu, ivo. Na ni meona nature, nature ni kaa tuko the same. The Abadea forest is a source of water for the area surrounding Gatiko village. Hakuna binadamu wanaishi huku kwa hivyo, maji ni safi kabisa. Like, we're having to do a lot of, uh, hey, apo karibu niende. We're having to do a lot of navigation. Some of us have tripped. Uh, we have to be very careful and mindful of each other. There's a picture. Uh, na, na je awa. Oh, when you are in the eh? Kwanza, maybe at a kukuwa na truck. They have to carry it. I don't even know. I think we should find out how they did all this. I think that would be a worthwhile thing. Hi. Ah, we kujia mapema. Karibu, karibu. Come, come, ingia. Ni mefungua gate sijali. Karibu, karibu. Ingia ni eh. Eh, uchungu kichwa. Watu wetu walikuwa wafupi. Ni sawa tu ingia. Hebu nione. Ah ingia ingia sasa ina shida. Haina shida. Karibu abadeas. Eh. Ah karibu karibu. Eh yeah, eh yeah, yeah. Ah hata huni wetu. Eh. Yeah. This is the thickest forest. Thickest vegetation. Thickest forest. Uh also I think the longest we have ever gone looking for a waterfall. Kwa sababu tulianza 9 it's uh, some minutes to, it's what? Others drink so much, sasa. 20 minutes to one. But it's worth it. To me, on a glimpse. Let's go. Come, buyer. Buyer. This is the grandest waterfall that we have ever seen. We've had to work the hardest to come see it. And it has paid off. I mean, just look at that. In a car, in a car, it's on a shelf, it's on a highway, it's on a A1, B2, C3. It's just amazing. I mean, just look at the, the rock formations. Up in a car, the car in your abstract art. Eh? Rona vile unaingia building, skyscraper. Apo reception. Kuna kuanga na ki art piece. Sandio hii hapa alafu sasa una. 
hapa panaitwa Gatago waterfall Gatago waterfall Gatago waterfall eh na pia hii waterfall na pia hii river inaitwa Gatango this is a permanent oh okay yeah. so throughout the year kuna throughout the year in a rainy season eh maji ni mingi sana eh lakini wakati wa dry yeah. inapungua kidogo so so kama hizo rainy seasons ni gani march and april, march, april. april. Uh -huh. and from uh, october up to december up to maji december, ni sana yeah. so maji akiwa mengi tunaweza simama hapa atuweze simama kabisa yeah. so, yeah, sometimes in a cover in a cover eh? yeah, yeah. from where we started yeah. we have already covered 6 kilometers yeah. to the waterfall uh, ni watalii wa gani wa nje ama wa, wa huku ndio wengi huwa mm. anakuja Foreigners yeah. ndio wengi. Mbona unaona uh, locals hawakuji sana? Maybe hawajajua yeah. the place yeah. sana. Yeah. Mimi nimetokea katika county inaitwa Vihiga. Vihiga. Ikatokeaje huko sasa we ni uko huko Moranga? Hapa kule tu na marafiki pale campus ni Kakamega. Yeah. Nikapata opportunity ya kukuja ku work huko Moranga. Umai ku hapa? No, you, know, no. you have never been here. I have never been here. Yeah. This is my first time. But do you hike? Yes, I do hike. Lakini hujai fika hapa. Ah, sija sija fika hii sasa hii. But yeah. in this Abadeya's forest, yeah. kuna place the upper place yeah. nimefika. Nimefika. Inaitwa Kikai. Where how do you find the falls? Now this is your first time yeah. here. How do you find the falls? Actually the falls yeah. may find kuwa amazing. Yeah. This is my second fall visiting. My yeah. first one was Thompson Falls Thompson in Falls. Nyandarua yeah. but this one I find it ni high than yeah. ila ya Thompson I yeah. feel happy I'm excited yeah. at least hii siku nime nime experience something new yeah. this part of Moranga yeah, yeah. okay sasa juu tumefika kwa waterfalls we can roll the credits juu eh tumetimiza juhudi letu Goja 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 haraka ni ya nini story bado If you thought the trail that we used to get here was hard ile nimeonesha tisa tunaenda tunatoka nayo ndio mama yao na baba yao na anko na kazi na nephew The temperatures drop suddenly and we have to start moving We have to climb to the top of the ridge and the grandest falls come with the steepest incline hapa kuna ka truck kamewekwa tisjui railings na step mm -mm. hii ni truck mwitu kila kitu ni kienyeji hapa ni hapa ni human gear gear 1 na si mchezo oh you have to support yourself with the different ridges that people have made and the vines and the roots but also be careful usishike sting in nettle like me Nimewana washo mi vidole yani. Yote si gear one, yoni gear truck. Kuna mali kwingine ya mtu ufika na jita kamkutana kujikubusha kuwa hakuna mtu alikulazimisha ukuje huku. I can see where the guides told me that more foreign tourists visit Gatango more than the locals. Na weze msikia nyanya yangu akiniuliza njora nani alikutuma huko? Kwani wewe ni maumau unapigania uhuru? <sighs> And we made it. We finally all get to the top. It has been quite a climb and everyone is okay. Miss ya suka. Ah, yo hike ni nzuri. Sasa can roll the credits. Bado. Ni nini leo? Yo imeanza kunyasha. Ama ni luck, ama ni bad luck. Hapana ni hike. Mm. Woohoo! The rain throws a new challenge as more people slip and fall. Hakuna mtu alibeba mwavuli, so we get a good lesson on why the forest in Abadeas is called a rainforest. Hiyo sitawai sahau. Hii njia inaitwa njia ya gatango. Ukiona natembea hivi si ule hivi ni kuchoka. Eh naenda home. So uh, this is a barrier. Sawa, namaliza. Thanks.
Hii ni uh, boundary. Hii pande ni Nyeri na hii pande ni Moranga. Na waterfalls iko Moranga. Tio, oni tengeneza kashimo nzuri. Ipate Eventually we all make it safely. It is said no man crosses the same river twice for he is not the same man and it is not the same river. As I go over the Madhyoya again I feel different. My clothes are dirty and I'm a bit sore but I have gained a lot of knowledge and most importantly I have experienced beauty like no other. After what we have been through we are all different people. If I could sum up Madhyoya in one phrase it would be cold on the outside but warm on the inside. The place is cold but the hearts of the people are warm. Eh. <laughs> ah, karibu, karibu. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Very nice place. Ah, maze. Sasa. This week on Twende. We continue with the transformation brought about by the raids. We will tell you the new name of the B7 highway and it's all about a promotion. We will visit new springs in Kibwezi. We visit Kwachai where they grow crops all year round. Kwani wanapanda chai huku? Kibwezi. Ai, kweli? Last week we set out to Makweni to see how the recent rains have transformed the landscape. It was good to see the relief brought to the farmers and the pastoralists at the border of Makweni and Kajiado. This week we continue our journey further down to Kibwezi. The once brown and scorched land has turned green. That is from above. On the ground, we are able to discover the details. It isn't just the grass that is sprouting. There is a great variety of plant species. The Tithonia rotundifolia is in bloom. Usiniulize inaitwa aje kwa kikamba because the flower is not native to Kenya. It is also known as a red sunflower which originated from Mexico. The Kamba Linguistic Council is yet to release the Kikamba name for this Malai. Na kabla waipatie jina, we suggest Malai tune. Like many other invasive species, someone may have brought it with good intentions. Na sasa imesamba all over Africa. But it is not just the foreigners that are thriving. During the dry season, the tree the Kamba call Kiamba sheds all its leaves. Not a single leaf is left and it is easy to think that the tree is dead. The bare branches look like roots and it is as if someone has uprooted the kamba and placed it upside down. Because of this the baobab has at times been referred to as Africa's upside down tree. According to some African myths and legends the baobab was proud and used to lord over other plants, something that angered the gods. They consequently uprooted it and placed it on the ground upside down ili iwe funzo kwa wengine. Just before the rainy season, something remarkable happens. The baobab produces new leaves. It goes from this to this. The tree that was dead comes back to life. Ninyo watu wa kutengeneza motivational memes hapa kwa baobab iko enough foliage. From Kibwezi towards the coast and the Tanzania border this is baobab country. So next time you are driving along Mombasa road depending on the season this special African tree will have a different look and feel every time.
It is not just the plants that have gone through a transformation. The junction of B7 at the outskirts of Kibwezi town has also changed. Last time we were here, there were many roadworks going about on the bridge. It is now complete. All the works appear finished on this 200 kilometer highway from Kibwezi to the A3 or Thika Garisa Highway. Presently, vehicles joining the new highway from Mombasa Road can safely do so with this new overpass. But it is not the junction that has gotten a transformation. Not so long ago, we were on this road highlighting Kibwezi. I have some good news. Now, it has been upgraded. Now, B roads yeah, are roads that connect centers with national importance. A roads connect centers with international importance. Now, what was B7 is A9. Now, Kama Barabara in Zapata promotion, Sembuse Wewe. 2023 is your year. What was motivation? Leo to our party, content believe you. Less than five years ago, this road was a loose surface road, and today it is an A class road. I know you're probably wondering what these letters and numbers mean. You have heard us mention them a lot in the show, Sindio. If you like traveling, then this is information that can help you. Kwa wengwe tu sisi ujua barabara ni alami maram au dongo, Sindio. Pengine zile letters tunajua ni S, P na M. S yani smooth, P yani potholes, na M yani maram. Lakini road classification is more complicated than that. Apart from A and B, pia kuna E na D. At the bottom are class E roads. Any road link to a minor center, market or local center is class E. The road that bears the title of A1 is this 884-kilometer Esabania Nandapal Highway connecting Tanzania to South Sudan. The A2 runs from Nairobi to Moyale for 777 kilometers connecting Kenya and Ethiopia. The 517-kilometer A3 Highway connects Kenya with Somalia. Kwa sasa shika hizo, but it is something we will keep coming back to kwa vile sisi usafiri kwa barabara. So next time you are traveling, just know that these boards have a more important purpose than just kubandika posters za waganga na wanasiasa. The new A9 Highway will take you to one of the most beautiful places in Kibwezi. kilometers from Kibwezi town, we get these springs at Kibongoni. The water is clear, sparkling and teeming with fish. This is also the source of the Yo River. It is named so after the Yo tree that is found in abundance near the source. The area around Kibwezi has many springs thanks to the Chulu Hills and the surrounding volcanic fields which collect most of the water. Then with nature's superior plumbing, the water is distributed in the surrounding areas and the springs are the tops. Last year when we visited the area, I drank from the springs in the middle of Kibwezi town. They still produce fresh, clean water to this day. No. 
Kivingoni Springs located a bit further from Kibwezi town are bigger and produce more water. For the settlers, this provided a great place to set up commercial farms as there was guarantee of having water for irrigation all year round. From this satellite image, we can see how this part of Ukambani is constantly green as the rest of the land is brown. One of the places that benefits from the springs is Kwachai. It is a small irrigation scheme that is near the mouth of the spring. In most parts of Kenya, food is grown through rain-fed agriculture. This usually leads to heavy losses whenever the rains fail. Na sikuizi imekuwa ni kama kawaida kwanza ukambani. Hapa kwa chai wanaweza kuwa na shida zao lakini maji kwa mimea sio moja yao. Lakini haya maji hata fika kwa mashamba tu hivyo. They need canals to take the water to the whole scheme. This irrigation scheme which was started before independence still operates to date. The scheme has a network of canals that snake across the 400 acres of land under irrigation. This place goes against how most people think of Ukambani. It is green with water flowing 24-7. The water has transformed this place into a paradise. It is indeed a land of plenty. Sasa unajua huku ukambani tunaviona kuna maji. Na hii naona ni maji, maji ni mengi. Sasa haya maji yanatoka wapi na hii ni nini? Hii mtaro inatoa maji mali panaitwa kifungoni. So mtu anachota tu hivi akipeleka hivi. Hapana, kuna mali kuna Tunapunga, yeah. maji inaingia. Okay. Hii inafanya kuteremuka inaenda shamba ingini. Ni serikali wali jenga hii? Isi ni society. Ni society, eh? Mm. Okovo si serikali? Nabana. Ya serikali hiko kupande ya juu. Pande ya juu? Mm. Sa ile... I, ile main kubwa. Ile main di wali tengeneza? Mm. Mm. Sasa hii na kwa sababu ina, ina watu wali waliongea ama ni nini? Kile mwenye shamba mm. na yule mwenye shamba ana wana, wana sanga pesa mm. ana nunua simiti au matipare. Yeah. Ndio ana jenga. Kwa hiyo ni tofali, ni tofali eh. Mm. Okay. Na mkaagana. Yeah. Na sasa maintenance na kuanga ina, inaendelea aje. Kwa sababu ni kitu lazima ikuwe maintained. Hii kivunjike hii pande sasa ni hii shamba ama ni kila mtu ata atachanga kila mtu mm. watashanga eh yeah. atashanga pesa eh yeah. waseme mali plani eh yeah. tengenezwe itengenezwe mm. yule yule mwenyewe anatengeneza ndio hii mm. mwenye shamba okay yeah. hii ni hii ni saa kila mtu anatengeneza society mm. lakini hii ni wewe unajitengenezea yeah. na sasa yeah. hii maji mm. wanga inaisha hapana maji yaishi Na vile kumekuwa na kiangazi, maji mekua tu hivi? Hii maji ni ya samane na samane. Hata yeah. yeah. mababu yetu wazikuwa na natumia hizi maji. Oh, okay. yeah. So umesema ina itapita hivi? Yeah. Tukifunga, yeah. nikifunga hapa. Nikifungua yeah. hapa, maji inaendelea na kwa nakazi. Kwa nakazi, 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 Yeah. Yeah. 
The farmers here use the age-old method of flood irrigation to water the crops. After some time, Ze Kumboi has to close the canal to his shamba. It is impressive how the people here mine their neighbors downstream. This ensures that there is always enough water for everyone. As the saying goes, there is enough for all our needs but not for all our greed. Now imagine me angry because I've been accused of force. So so up and your. And they have it. Up. There's plenty of water and lots of food. Nasa i i tachukua muda gani ndio i i kuetari. Hmm, maendo na juu kwa idaya gani miezi tatu? Miezi tatu. Miezi tatu. Sasa miezi tatu ata kabla yushe. Maendo na kuwe mekoma. Na itapita zaidi ya ama itapita. Itapita mbado mbado ni kidogo. Tunalima na maji. Atutumi atu tenge me imfua. ตั้งเกมีมัวถ้าสบายว่าเงี้ยใช่ไหมเนี่ยใช่ทุกคนก็ก็มาอุ้มมาเขาเลี้ยวพี่ตาทุกคนก็ทำมัวแต่กินวัน
Like many farmers, however, in the country, they have a challenge getting a market for some of their produce. Hiyo so kwa ikwangi zuri. Lakini tunangangana tu. Tuseme kama hii shamba yangu nimepanda tomato, mahali nipate mahali ya kupeleka niuze zote mara moja, itasaidia sana. Itasaidia sana. Lakini bado ukame, bado iko. Sababu ya mambo ya 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 Watu wengi alikufa kwa nyama yao wamekufa. Mangombe mingi wamekufa sana. Now, after seeing how neighbor in Kajado has a challenge with having enough fodder for their livestock, and now in Kibwezi they don't have enough market for their food, kuna vile, you know. I think ni kona idea. Mepatana na wafugaji uko. Ni mwono wanatafuta nyasi. Na wakona shida sana juu kumekuwa na ukame. Na je, nujua ndiyo kona maindi, kona skuma. Pia uneze ingia ya ku ya kupanda nyasi ya wafugaji. Tuanze hapo kwanza mimi ni mfungaji. Eh. Niko na ngombe, eh. nafunga nyumbani zero grazing. Eh. Na huo mwaka ulipita, tuseme mwaka umeisha sasa. Eh. Nakwambia tulitabika, mm. tulikuwa tunasunguka kutafuta chakula. Eh. Kama ni hizi zangu nalisha wiki moja inaisha. Eh. So ningeona tupande nyasi. Eh. Ndio tusaidiane na kulisha hizo mifugo na wafugaji mm. pia hata mifugo yako hata yangu eh. Eh, kwa sababu nimeona shida sana mm. eh okay hiyo eh. eh, ni mzuri kwa sababu eh. hata inaweza kuwa large scale inaweza kuwa ta parking unajua vile Nairobi kuna kuanga mahali ya parking mm -hmm. so mnaeka tu sehemu kila mtu akona namba yake ya kuje mm. alishe alafu aende mm -hmm. mm. hiyo unaweza weka tukif hiyo uweke tu useme ya idea ilikuwa ya mshamba. Eh. <laughs> Nimekuja kuambia mkulima eh. eh, kutoka mshamba. Eh. Sawa. <laughs> eh. My time in Kajado and Makweni has been well spent. Kwa wale mnafikiria ukambani hakuna chakula, unahitaji kutembea kwa chai. It is a good place that shows our stereotypes on different parts of our country are not founded on facts. The springs and the river are a great place to visit and you can get the freshest farm produce. It is always good to see old friends make growth. B7 is now A9. Kumbe Barabara ineza pata promotion. These roads, they grow up so fast. I have seen how seasons make travel exciting. Remember to look out for the barber. This week on Twende, we are in Migori. I get to experience the Migori sunrise. I get to learn how to clean the inside of Amtungi. Ongeze maji. Kidogo. Maji kidogo. Muhuru Bay, the place time left behind. Have you ever heard of Mamweni, the uninhabited island in Migori that has a dark secret? If you aren't next to the lake, it helps to start your journey early. We are on A1 that leads to the border, but we branch off on the C13 road that heads straight to the lake. It looks like it will be a good day. The C13 is in good condition and is well marked with all the necessary signage. Migorians are early risers and many are on the move. The gold mines, however, are still yet to be opened. After 26 kilometers on the smooth tarmac, we are down to loose surface road. The Migori sunrise is extremely beautiful today. The traders from neighboring Narok are 
are already busy. Unlike neighboring Kisi, this county still has large open spaces which makes it a nice place to enjoy the sunrise. Hapo tungekuwa huko kwingine tungekuwa kwa nyumba ya mtu. However, as I enjoy the sunrise, I soon discover nimeingia kwa wenyewe na hawa ni wale wabaya. Hapa kuna jeshi huwa ilali. Wao tuseme tu mchunge kwa sababu wewe ukienjoy sunrise kuna watu walikuwa job. Hii shift yao ijeisha. We are back on the road where the children are going to school. The main public transport mode is the pro box. This is deep rural. We cross the river Ongoche that flows from Tanzania. Again, just to remind you, it is during the dry season and Ongoche River still has a healthy flow. This river sustains people around the Ongoche area. This area has no piped water and for the people here their day starts with fetching water at the river. Growing up I have never had to go fetch water in a river so while for me this is an experience for Clinton and his friend Mohamed Salah this is a way of life. Ni tuta maji mara ngapi kwa siku? Hapa. Mm. Kama mara tatu mara tano hivi. Eh. Eh yani tukipanda tunachora tu maji. Eh. Na haya maji mnaenda kutumia vipi? Ile ya kupika, kunywa. Clinton's friend Sala is doing what some people could call scoring an own goal. Una hisa fishanga kama mara ngapi? Ah, you see you see kuna vumbi tunasafishanga asubuhi jioni. Na sasa vile wapu watu wanachota maji hapa na unaosha eh hii ofisi yako yeah. <laughs> hapa unaona zinaambatana zina ama iko sawa tumezoea tu hivi eh yeah. juu hapa ni tume tumetoka tunaenda kazini eh yeah. na huwezi beba beseni eh yeah. the men carry the water on motorbikes if you don't have a motorbike then you can use the old fashioned green energy way So maisha ongote kwa vipi? Maisha ya ongote. Yeah. <laughs> Ni hadi kidogo. Yeah. Si unaona saa hii yeah. hatuna tuna tunateseka kuhusu yeah. maji. Na niulize ume umetembea umetembea kama umeenda city ukaona maisha eh, ya huko na ukakompea ya huko. Ne nimetembea wapi? Oyugis. Yeah. Huko Oyugis. Ni vifuru kuliko huko kwetu. Vivian is 23 but has never experienced city life anywhere in the country. Despite that, I have a lot to learn from her. So vile nimeona toka Vivian ukiscrub mtungi kuweka tu maji hivi, hautaweza kutoa uchafu. So lazima uchukue mchanga hivi. ongeza maji kidogo maji kidogo oh <laughs> ika min mosha kama kurutu it is time to head off towards muhuru bay the road may not be tarmacked but it is in a fairly good condition Given the way the pro boxes are flying on this road we can say it's it isn't so bad. However, they seem to be the only other vehicle on this road. There are graders maintaining it so it can be more comfortable even for a smaller car. Lakini zi pro box zinaendeshwa ni kama ziko kwa lami. As we approach Muhuru Bay town, we are getting into a fascinating part of our journey. We are entering the actual bay. Mm -hmm. 
So, what is a bay? A broad inlet of the sea where the land curves inwards. It feels like an island that is connected to the mainland. We have covered several bays in this show before like Kendu Bay and Homa Bay and there are many other bays around the lake. However, Muhuru Bay is special as it affects the Kenya-Tanzania border. The borderlines on Lake Victoria in Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda are straight with the exception of Muhuru Bay. Here the border curves to accommodate the bay, leaving the whole landmass in Kenya. The bay is far from the big towns, making the water very clear. Uh, before today, Sikwa Najwa, e place in exist. So we are in a place called Muhuru Bay. Na tulia mkasubui sana tutakula breakfast so ndio tusaini na wataka kula breakfast and ah tutakula hapa azimio la umoja hotel So hapa delicacy ni um red kuon skuma red ndio samaki kuon ndio ugali Baada ya breakfast we continue with our journey if you are a climbing enthusiast, this place will rock your world. The bay has a number of roads, each leading to a different part. We are looking for a specific location, so we've got to give water map. Um, it's fairly accurate, fairly reasonable to follow. But so easy we have been almost going round in circles. Not, not, let me not say round in circles, but to see me at Jafika. It is hard to find the right route, but with a little help from our eye in the sky, we are back on the right track. get to the end of C13 and discover a place left behind in time. It looks pristine as it would have decades ago. It is not many times you can say umefika mwisho wa barabara. After a drive of 500 kilometers, we have reached the end of the road and have traveled as far west as we can to Kenya's farthest border point. <laughs> Na swimaje? Hebu nioneshe. Okay. Niingie tu. It's in one direction. Okay, you need confirmation as I enter. Muhuru Bay is not the farthest point on the Kenyan side of the border. There is still a small island that is the very last point. I can imagine waking up to this every morning. It would be, how could I say it, perfect. There is no electricity or running water in the houses, but life is good here. The main economic activity is fishing and the people are very friendly. I have this burning desire to swim to the small island near the shoreline. After some consultation, we decide to use a boat to the big island and then try swimming to the small one later. Even while you take your adventure, you need to take precautions because we still need you. Kingia Kwamaji, ensure you have a safety jacket. And ensure the rest of the crew does have a safety jacket. If you come on as a swim, you never know. 
Nature ni unpredictable. So stay safe. Kidogo kidogo, we are on our way to the island. We just left the mainland, headed to the island, and in my mind, it's in a straight two line. But in the office, there are two and there are nets, so we have to navigate around the nets. Do you see a ribu biashara mtu mingine? Ukiamka mapema, it is possible to reach Tanzania and Uganda in the same day. Majua, I've just noticed, ina katuka mountains za ugali. Ama ndio maana watu wanapenda kula samaki na ugali. The island is surrounded by rocks that can make landing the boat risky business. Good thing we are with the locals who know a good sheltered point. After about 25 minutes of boat ride, we set foot on this uninhabited island. I feel like an explorer about to discover new lands. Hapa inaitwa Mamweni. Inaina maanisha nini? Hii jina ya Mamweni. Ni kama sisi vile tulizaliwa tukakuta hiyo jina ilikuwa. Eh so kiundani yake sana kama mimi sijaijua sana. Eh lakini naitwa Mumweni. Hiyo ndio tumeanza kutoka hiyo utotoni wazee wetu walikuwa naita tu hivyo. Ni kama ni majina sababu wazee walikuwa wanapana hizi majina kufanana na kitu na maana yake. The Kenyan part of Lake Victoria is small but it has very many islands. A good number of them especially the small ones are uninhabited and unheard of. Sema tu kweli, ulikuwa ushawahi sikia hiki kisiwa kinaitwa Mamweli? You see? Na sasa hii Mamweni eh, highest point ni gani? Ni kama that side. Eh. Yeah. Ni hiyo side. Hana kama hiyo side. Hapo itakuwa shida. Hana yeah. kama ile ile dishipe zile ile kwa rahisi kupanda. Ni rahisi kupanda hii. Yeah. Kuvu tuanze na hii. Eh, tuanze na hii. Ni community gani inaishi hapa? Sisi ni bantu wa Suba. Oh, hapa ni Suba? Yeah. Lakini nimesikia ni kama mnaongea Sisi ni wa Suba tunaongea Kisuba hata lugha yetu tunasema. Eh. Yeah. So tunachanganya wajaluo pia tumeingiana nao lakini yeah. sisi ni wa Suba. Suba is a language that is closer to Kisi and Kuria and the community is found in South Nyanza and Northwestern Tanzania. Yaani mpaka ukienda pale kwa mpaka, yeah. pale kwa migration, yeah. wana hizi tuko hivi na hivi. Yeah. Kama mchoro map ya Tanzania ndio yeah. tukata katika wengine oh. wakaenda Saidi, yeah. wengine yeah. wakapesa Saidi. Oh, okay, lakini yeah. kitu kimoja. Kitu kimoja. Huko ni upande ya Tanzania. Huko ni Tanzania? Yeah. Hiyo si Kenya. Hapo si Kenya. Mpaka imepitia huko chini. Yeah. Hapo chini. Yeah. So hiyo bahati yote sehemu yote unaona hii upande ya Tanzania. Oh. Eh. Yeah. Kwa hapa ndio mwisho wa Kenya. Hapa mali tuko ni mwisho wa Kenya. Hii island mali, mali tuko hapa. Yeah. Ni island ya Kenya. Yeah. So kama wale wenyeji wenye tunaishi hapa. Yeah. Tuliachiwa sehemu hapa tu ya kuvua samaki kidogo tu. Maji kidogo tu. Yeah. So pande nyingine ni yeah. ya Tanzania. Wa Tanzania wanakuja mpaka wao pia wanakuja wanashika samaki hapa. Yeah. Tuko nao pamoja. Kwa hivyo uhusiano wa, wa, wa Kenya na wa Tanzania yeah. ni, ni tuseme ikwaje? Haijakuwa mbaya sana sababu mm. hakujatokea vita. Yeah. Tuna, tunavua na wao. Yeah. Sisi wao pia wanavua na sisi. Yeah. Hata samaki wanakuja wanauza huku. Yeah. Eh, wao sisi pia tunauza huku. Oh, okay. Ni kama moja mbili tatu naweza kutoka na saa zingine yeah. wale maskari yao wakufanya yeah. Paris wanakuja. wanakuja mm. Anakuja saa zingine wasika boti zetu. Kuna boti zingine zetu zingine wameenda nazo huko. Yeah. Paka zimeenda zimekwama mm. juu ya faini ile ushuru oh, wataka watu watoe. Yeah. So zile zimekwama lakini za zingine zingine tumeenda tumefuata tumpaka zinarudi. We set off to climb the highest point on the island. Mungu moja nyakanyaka pale. Haya. Okay, second highest point. The highest one tuliambiwa it is a bit risky. Remember, safety first. Lakini hata hiyo sio rahisi vile. Tanzania. Yeah. Tanzania. Yeah. 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 Ye
ile nyingine so so asubuhi upepo inatoka pande gani usem pande huko yeah. na kuja this side na alafu sasa jioni jioni za hii inatoka hapa yeah. naenda huko na huko ni wapi huko ni Uganda sasa kwa hii ni Uganda eh yeah. ukienda hii direct sehemu ya Mwanza iko huko okay Bukoba ni huko huko yeah. The island is covered in white which indicates that the main inhabitants are birds. Mbona wewe usikujuishe hapa? Hapa? Eh. Sasa sababu bado hakuna bado kuna ushama shamba huko nje. Ndio maana sasa watu walitenga sehemu. Eh. Lakini kuna kipindi watu watakuja kuishi. Eh. Naona kama kuna sehemu nzuri hapo wanaweza kujenga nyumba yako. There is also another dark reason as to why no one lives here. Kama zamani wazee yeah. watu walikuwa nakufa. Yeah. Wali sababu hakuko na jembe yeah. ya kushimba kaburi. Yeah. So kuna sehemu nyingine pale. Yeah. Watu walikuwa nakuja wanawekwa humo wako ndani wana wamekuwa mpaka wametobekea huko. Yeah. So hata ukienda hapo kuna hizi limbs za watu ziko sehemu nyingine hapo oh. hizi skulls huko tu. Eh hey, iko sehemu nyingine. Those wengine sikuizi maji maji likuja wengine wamezamia wame kwa maji. Kama mtu alikuwa amemgonjwa sana, yeah. atolewa huko nje. Yeah. Analeletwa analeletwa amewekwa hapo. Sasa wanakuja wanamwangalia kama bado bado yuko hai, yeah. wanaletewa chakula. Eh. Yeah. Fariki sasa wanamwacha sasa wanamweka huko. Mamweni is one island that is easy to explore and is possible to cover all of it within an hour. It is getting late in the afternoon and the lake can get very rough so it is time to leave. The wind is blowing from the Uganda side and the boats are coming back. I had wanted to swim from the bay to the small island with trees but now the lake is very rough and it is too risky to swim to an island surrounded by rocks. We decide to shelf the idea for another convenient time and place. Remember, safety first. Life in the bay is simple and humble, but the locals seem happy and content. Bay ya Upepo haijaongezeka so they can still power their sailboats comfortably and support their main economic activity, fishing. The lake provides all their water needs. They also have their livestock which seem to fare better during the drought unlike other parts of the country. Life is good for the children who have the biggest swimming pool they could ever have. Life is good. Electricity and piped water aside, one thing that could improve the economy of this bay is if the C13 road is stomached all the way to the lake. There is only 22 kilometers of loose surface area that needs paving. Na mambo yatakuwa barabara. It is a few kilometers but it will mean so much to the people here. Not only will transport be cheaper for the residents but also it will be easy for more people to visit this unique Kenyan bay. There is so much to discover in Bigori County. I have enjoyed my time here in Muhuru Bay. <laughs> it has been quite the adventure. Swimming at Ruskebe. Waking up to tea in the morning. Playing golf in the Sondu. Bathing in the Kera and exploring Mamwen. My highlight was meeting the beautiful Kenyans that call all these amazing places home. It doesn't matter which part of the country you visit, there is a lot to discover. By the way, tuko jikoni tukipika story ingine mtapenda. This episode is special because there are very many reasons. We, I think we have ticked over two-thirds of the counties in this country. And Northeastern is somewhere we haven't really explored.
nilikuwa nataka ku try for the first time ku swim kwa maji na kai kala sasa vile hapa ni kama haipitiki tutumie ile oh yeah. kuna daraja it hasn't rained for close to four years now let think about that some of these kids were for three years four years meaning that this month was the first time they ever saw rain Upon me notice what our journey so we are here trying to help our fellow competitor Probox Say getting here was a journey is an understatement. We've made it just before sunset. This is Wajia town. A lake in Wajia country. كان لون كراء هدي لف مارت يدك التبرية يا سهي أو مارت إلمي دكان مارت هذا واحد ورس نجرين قصة بوعين قرية جرس وأحنا قال بس ما لسه مات سنة Even though the rains are here, this is a harsh reminder that there hasn't been any for years. These waterfalls are so hidden. Kama tunge kwa na deko, atunge zipata. This is Wajea. Last year we visited Busia and got to the mouth of the Nzoia. Yeah. The river with the second highest volume of water in Kenya. Today we would like to take you where it all begins in this prequel episode. We will follow this 257 kilometer long river that traverses six western counties from Elgeyo Marakwet, Transoya, Goma, Kakamega, Siaya, and finally Busia, where it drains into Lake Victoria. 
Our journey starts in the county which gives the river its name, Trans Zoya. It is early morning in Kitale and it is one of those days. Sikunjema wanekana subuhi. Kitale has this beautiful vibe in the morning. It is like waking up in the middle of a forest. We take the C48 or the Kitale Cherangani Road. Like most rural C class roads, it has light traffic and it is in good condition. It also has long straight stretches which would make some of you want to speed. Atusemi <laughs> watu Subaru. Watch out for the bumps that are yet to be marked. Uzuri sio zile mbaya na pia kuna zile <laughs> Rumble strips. Like in why should you speed? It is early morning, the air is clean, the environment is green and clean. Just put nice relaxing music and enjoy the drive. 30 kilometers from Kitale is the Kachibora Center, where we take the new D-Class road. We start our climb up to Kapcharo. This road is new and the markings are still very clear. Bums in on Ekana Vizuri Pier. Because we are going up, the road has great views of the valleys below. Never been here. First time here. This is amazing. I'm Aji Ashiko. Refreshing, beautiful Kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. Just look at those hills. One or two green. Different types of trees. Ukisema hmm? unaenda getaway. Kuja kwa hii barabara. Hafu kuna kabaridi. Kuna joto na baridi. Hawizi tembea tu bear chest. This part of Transoya is very cosmopolitan with different communities calling this place home. You know, sometimes, eh? I'm afraid to see mommy who enjoy view. Just look at this. How many times do you get to see something like this? Hmm? Ah! But also, you <laughs> quite careful. Let's go now. Hey! And then visit the Jakarta. And then see you on a car easy. Look at that. So be very careful, even as you're enjoying the views. Uh, you could be stepping on someone else's home or footpath. Na utakipata. Hawa nakawa kali sana. So kabla kuanza kuweka picnic, pekuwa pekuwa usije ukawa sinema huku mashambani. The main economic activity in this rural part of Transoya is agriculture. Hawa ndio wanatuisha. Even in a severe drought, this place is still green and producing a lot of food. Habari yako? Nzuri. Sasa hii sasa nini unafanya? Ninapiga piga maharagwe. Eh? Eh. Naweza jaribu? Eh, jaribu. Being from the city, I had never participated in bean threshing and I'm eager to learn. Unaigonga na nguvu ama kidogo tu? Ah, pole pole tu. Pole pole eh? Eh. Oh. Naweza tumia hii? Eh, tumia hiyo. Na hii imetoka shamba? Eh, hii imetoka shamba. Mm. Eh, yeah, unachapa tu pole pole eh? Ukichapa na nguvu itapasuka. Mm. Eh. Yeah. Ani kulize? Yeah. So Hapo ukulima kuna hii sasa ni eh, maragwe, si ndio? Mm. So ukulima ni maragwe na nini na nini? Maragwe? Uh -huh. Mahindi? Maragwe mahindi? Eh. Yeah. Eh. 
Na hapo hapa naitwa aje? Kiptoi. Kiptoi. Eh. Hiyo kiptoi inamaanisha nini? Kiptoi ni mchwa. Mchwa. Eh. O toi ni mchwa ama kiptoi yote ni mchwa. Yaani hiyo eh. toi. Toi eh. ni mchwa. Eh. Oh. Mm. Na nime 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 nimekuja kugundua kip ni mvulana chep ni msichana eh. so ni mchwa mvulana eh <laughs> kitoi eh, ni mvulana <laughs> sasa nilikuwa nataka kuuliza hii barabara mm. ilitengenezwa lini imesaidia na kulikuwa vipi hapo awali hapo awali eh. ilikuwa mbaya sana mm-hmm. kama shamba eh. na ilikuwa hata kari ya ipiti hata kusafirisha pita kwenda soko ilikuwa ngumu. Sasa kama hii sasa ungeweza eh, kusafirisha. Singe singeweza kusafirisha. Mm. Sababu magari ilikuwa ipiti. Eh. Lakini saa hii tunafurahi sana. Eh. Barabara ni rahisi kusafirisha chakula kwenda soko. Eh. Ni rahisi hata watoto kwenda shuleni. Eh. Imetusaidia sana. So hata hata imekata muda wa mm. kufikisha bidhaa na kufika shule. Eh hata transport sasa hii mm. eh si mbaya. Kwa hivyo imesaidia. Imetusaidia. Biashara imepanda ama imekuwa aje sasa? Biashara iko juu. Eh. Imepanda. Imepanda? Mm. A, naona kuna stima na barabara imetengenezwa. Ni nini bado haijafika hapa? Maji tunatoa mbali. Mpaka eh. kwa mtoni huko chini mm-hmm. ama tuende Maksima huko chini ni mbali sana. Eh. Mm. Nafurahi kuishi huko? Eh nafurahia. Eh. Mm. Hata na mashida ya kosa maji. Mm. Singetaka kuishi kwingine. Ni maji tu tunaomba. Eh. Eh. Lakini maji ikija hiyo eh. tu ndio shida eh. peke yake. Ndipo hapa hewa ni mzuri. Unajua mm. mimi nimetoka Nairobi. Mm. Hewa ikwangi hivi. Mm. Eh haikwangi. Watu usema uwezi kukula barabara but for the residents in this part of Transoya the road helps them earn a living. Hata mnaona kwa hiyo lamu sasa unaona wakati mwingi pikipiki hapa ndio iko busy sana kushinda gari. Hapa yeah, sisi watu wa boda ndio tunafanya yeah. vizuri kwa hii barabara sana. Yeah. Na tumefurahia pia maisha. Ukiangalia hata saa hii hapa yeah. unaona pikipiki inabita, ingine imebeba maziwa, mm-hmm. ingine imebeba viazi, mm-hmm. ingine imebeba mboga. Mm-hmm. Unaona nyanya? Pia nyanya na toka yeah. pikipiki pia hata inatoka Kitale yeah. na nyanya paka Kapchorop. Toka Kitale hadi Kapchorop. Ah Kapchorop imetuletea nyanya pia. Hiyo mm. tu bado ni pikipiki. Pikipiki. Hata pale ndani ndani ambayo umeona bonde hiyo sehemu ambayo unaona inaingia yeah. ndani ndani kwa kutoa yeah. msigo pale ndani bado ni pikipiki. Yeah. So pikipiki katika maeneo haya ndio imefanya kazi nzuri sana. Na nikulize wanatoa nyanya Kitale. Yeah. Kuna kuna mazao yanatolewa huko yanapelekwa huko. Sisi pia naye katika maeneo ya Kapchorop. Eh. Tuko na viazi, mm. tuko na mboga. Mm. Na toka pande pia tunapeleka huko. Oh. Viazi kienda huko pia wanatuletea nyanya eh. na vitu ambavyo hakuna maeneo ya Kapchorop. So sasa kama hizi zimebeba zine nini? Hizi pikipiki ambayo unaona zinabita hapo eh. au ni wafanyi biashara wanaenda kuuza nguo pale Kapchorop. Oh, no. Nguo hao wametoka wametoka Transoya eh. wanaingia upande wa Elgio Market. Pia eh, wanaenda kuuza wana kusoko. So hii barabara inaenda Elgeyo Marakot. Inaenda paka Elgeyo Marakot ya. Yeah. Trucks from Kitale also come for farm produce and now farmers here have access to more markets. Hii view ni tamu sana. Yeah. Ukiendesha boda eh, na ama pikipiki wewe oh, enjoy hii view ama ushazoea. Mimi nishazoea. Yeah. Juu wakati lamu imekuja hapa tumefurahia maisha yamekuwa rahisi kidogo. Yeah. Yeah. Juu pikipiki yangu hata pia iharibiki sana. Yeah. Ah, nimesoea ni lamu hii lamu imetusaidia sana. Na je view unaona sasa kaa mimi kutoka Nairobi sio nangi hivi. Unaona yeah. vile kuna milima, kuna miti, yeah. eh inakaa supu sana. Wewe anga unaenjoy ama Ah tunaenjoy sababu si niwasaliwa huku, yeah. tumesoya huku, huku tunasaingia huko hata nikipeleka wewe na boda pako huko tashangaa. Yeah. Lakini sisi tunabita tupole pole tumesoya. Ninaona umevaa jacket sijui ngapi. Najua ni kali. Kwani umevaa ngapi sasa? Mm, katika maeneo hii yetu yeah. ama yeah. area yetu yeah. area ya capture up. Hapa yeah. ni baridi bwana, brother. Oh ni baridi. Ni baridi sana lazima ujipanga lemon ya pia yeah. tunaamka mapema kurafikia nayo unajua huko ni baridi. Yeah. Area sio jua sio kali sana. Sio kali baridi sana. baridi. Ndipo Uf, unaona nimejipanga. Nimefanya majacket kama tatu na mnai brother. Jacket ni tatu. Jacket ni tatu. Na, na, Shati ni moja bado fest hii. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> na sweater. <laughs> na sweater. Naona sadi sweater. Sweater ni ngapi? Sweater ni kama pia mbili hivi. Ah. Yeah. Sh- sh- eh, ah. Best shati sweta mbili yeah. jacket tatu ya yeah, ndio sasa brother <laughs> <laughs> na trouser ama ni moja uh, long pia niko na long mbili ndani ah eh, ni kujipanga brother so ukiona hizo boda boda kwa barabara waheshimu 
These are the people facilitating most of the rural GDP. Also, as you eat your grains, there's a good chance it was transported on a boda boda. As you enter Capture Rock, the road has an exciting winding course. Hii ni ile kwa Kiswahili tunapenda kuita nyoka nyoka. It is here we cross the border to the county of Elgeyo, Marakwet. 47 kilometers from Kitale town, we find Capture Rock Forest, the birthplace of the Nzoia River. Elgeo Marakwet County ranks number two in the forest cover in the country. What makes the forest cover here special is that most of the trees in this county are indigenous. I'm sure you're wondering which county is number one in the forest cover. The county with the highest forest cover is Nyeri County at 40%. Now that we are on this subject, I'm sure you would also want to know the county on the other end. That would be Siaya County at 0.6%. So 38% of all the landmass in El Geo Marakwet is covered in indigenous forest. Sadly, most of the time, this is not what makes it to the news about this beautiful county. Mtazamaji wa tuatatu wamefariki kwa kiwemo afisa mmoja wa akiba na wezi wa wili wa mifugo katika mashambulizi yaliyofanyika kwenye eneo la Kaben County Elgeo Marakwet. Four people have been killed in Tot area in Elgeo Marakwet County. Before you say that you are not setting foot here, it is good to know that most of El Geo Marakot is actually peaceful, except for some parts of the border near the Kerio Valley. Last time we visited the county, we drove in the middle of the Embo Boot Forest. It was one of the best forest drives I had ever experienced. This forest is the source of the Embo Boot and Aror rivers, which end up in Lake. Turkana. This is key to our survival in the country as these forests are our water towers providing millions of people, livestock and wildlife with clean drinking water. On the other side of the county, another river is born in another forest. This one though, will head south into the densely populated western side of the country. I have been to the end of the Nzoia River. This is the farthest source of the Nzoia River. So in your origin story, yeah, that episode. Alafu <laughs> ukiangalia, we were taught that, uh, actually here, Upper Twende, we were taught that when a tree has moss, then it's a healthy forest. And you can see almost, almost every tree. You don't want to Eh, in and out you can I mean, we are right next to the road, but you can still be drowned by the sounds of the forest. Birds, crickets, water, and your thoughts. Bariako. Zuri sana. Sasa haya maji yanaitwa nini na hapa pana itwa nini? 
hapa yeah. haya maji yanaitwa chepkaiti 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 eh na haya maji yeah. yanatoka yeah. hii forest mm -hmm. hii forest ni forest naitwa nini hii forest inaitwa sengwer forest sengwer forest sengwer sengwer sa sengwer ni nini sengwer ni jamii ni jamii jamii ndogo eh yeah. jamii ya wakale nyi Oh vile kalenji ni wengi so Sengwer ni moja Sengwer ni iko ndani yake. Eh. Iko ndani yake. Sijawasikia sana. E, walikawa walikawanyika kitambo. Eh. Eh. Walikuwa wengi upande huu uh -huh. lakini wakati eh, wazungu walikuja eh. ukawa na ile boundaries. Mm, mm. Hasa kuna wengine walipelekwa upande wa Westport. Mm -hmm. Wengine wakabaki huku. Mm. Wengine wakaenda wakaelekea njia ya Keyo. Mm. sasa amwalo wenye wamepaki hapa yeah. ni wachache we, na wewe ni kwa Kalenjin wewe ni mimi ni mimi ni msangwer wewe ni msangwer mimi ni msangwer oh okay mimi ni msangwer wewe ni ya rare mimi ni moja mimi ni moja mimi ni moja yao wewe sasa wewe ni ka gold sasa eh mimi ni moja yao mimi ni moja yao so umesema hii inaitwa eh, chep eh mto inaitwa eh. chepkaitit sasa chepkaitit ina maanisha nini unajua nimesikia jina chep kimoi chep nini eh, keep so oh, sam oh, hii inaitwa chep sasa ku chep kaiti eh, kai, eh, kwa kikalenjin eh, ama kisengwer mm, kaiti ni baridi oh kaiti ni baridi, baridi. Uh -huh. haya maji eh, unavyoona mm, ni baridi sana ni baridi ni baridi sana nikishika sasa inta isikia unaweza ku unaweza ku freeze unaweza ku freeze eh yeah. mm. hey. hey. maji ni baridi kabisa eh so tu ai una so kaitit ni e, e, ni ba, kaitit baridi baridi sana. baridi sana na chep na keep sasa inakuanga tofauti che, che, chep yeah. chep ni kwa wakale jina wanapatia yeah. jina wasichana aha chep kaitit chep kaitit alafu che, alafu so chep ni msichana keep ni eh, sasa mba. unajua yeah. unajua mto ama yeah. maji yeah. yana usiishwa na wamama kwa oh, sababu sana oh, sana eh. hao wanatumia eh. eh, maji eh. hao ndio huwa wanaenda mto so even local languages have gender for nouns eh hey, hata sisi tuko complex hii ni sus mm. hii maji mm. ina ina inaweka maji yake eh. river nzoia is it the only source ya nzoia hapana hapana eh. kuna okay. mito zingine ndogo eh. ndogo oh ndogo ndogo eh, kuna ndogo ndogo eh. kama ya chebai mm kuna yenye inatoka cha Rangaje Barwarwa Ward huko. Mhm. Mm yeah. Capture Rock Forest is at the border of three counties and depending on the community the forest goes by different names. It is not by accident that Elgeyo Marakwet has one of the biggest forest covers in Kenya. Wasangweru yeah. ni watu ambao ni watu wa kuwinda o watu wa kuwinda eh yeah. na ni watu wa kutafuta asali mm. sasa wa, wamechunga msitu yao mm. wamechunga msitu yao yeah. msitu yao ijaribiwa ndio unaona hata maji mm. haya maji ni safi mm. eh ijaribiwa hii maji yeah. inatoka eh, msituni huko ndani yeah. sasa hapa hapa sengwere sasa ni wa sengwere pekee na kama kuna jamii wengine ambao huanga na kaa huko E, kwa sasa, kwa sasa mm. kuna jamii ambayo wamekuja. Yeah. Kuna jamii wamekuja yeah. e, kama wa Marakwet yeah. kama kwa sababu kuna mji ambao yeah. inaitwa Capcherop ambao yeah. hapa karibu. Hasa yeah. watu wameingia hapa karibu yeah. hata tumeenda mari nawa. Yeah. And you do unaona yeah. hata jamii karibu ina ina inapotea ina, ina kidogo. Yeah, inapotea kwa sababu ya sile jamii zingine yenye walikuja hapa. This water has not passed through any settlement and is very clean but don't take my word for it it is time to put my mouth where the water is Aya maji vile umesema ni masafi eh wewe unaweza kunywa eh naweza kunywa maji safi sana kunywa. wewe unaweza kunywa tunaweza kunywa eh, tunaweza kunywa haya maji haya so we, ni, ni oneshe unajua sasa mwenyeji ndio atanionyesha vile <laughs> Maji safi sana. Eh. Maji, ni maji safi sana. Cha ni kuja hapo ni kunywe. Basi. Eh. 
כן, מה ניתם? It is hard to imagine that this small river will flow for over 200 kilometers to Lake Victoria and go from this to this. It has been an exciting journey to capture up forest. I have seen how the people in this rural part of Transoya are benefiting from the new road. I got to meet Asengwer and learn something about this minority community. And I got to drink from the Nzoya near the Every time I googled places to visit in Kisi County, the top places that caught my attention was the Kisi soapstones that they have in plenty. Kama vile wakona mandizi, ama tuseme tu matoke. I wondered, soapstones? Hmm. Kwani hao watu who produce sabuni za mawe? That question got me taking a trip to Kisi County to visit the famous tobacco town known for soapstones and to discover another gem. Clap your hands one time, make it two times. Now Our journey began in Nairobi and as usual we were ready for the long distance ride. Uh, take a bath in a good vibe. Disclaimer, to go to Shambiwa that it would be a long one. On a new pick, pick Kisi is located around 237 kilometers away from Nairobi and it would take roughly roughly seven hours to get to Kisi. Of course, in a tegemea how slow or fast you drive, nani gari gani unatumia as well as stopovers. But I'm assuming ukitumia Subaru, it'll take a shorter time. Aki tumengilia watu wa Subaru zana kwa isho. I promise, this is the last time. It's a compact kabu yuga. Anyway, we took a number of stopovers because when nature calls, you respect it. But the most memorable one was in Narok, where we decided to have a quick lunch. I've heard how Nyama ya Narok is so good and what better place to stop over than there. Kisi is the biggest town in Nyanza region after Kisumu. Unlike the latter, Kisi doesn't have a port or railway connection. Despite that, the town has grown to be the large metropolis it is becoming. Ukiuliza hu tajiru natoka wapi, hawata kuambia ti o ni god manze. Hapa ni bidi ya biashara. Huku kisi wanajua kutengeneza chibesa ndio gova wakaona wacha wafungwe ile benki kuu. The Central Bank of Kenya, CBK, has opened a new currency center in Kisi town, a move expected to ease the distribution of cash in seven counties in the Nyanza region and enhance access to remittances from the diaspora. Kisi receives rainfall throughout the year. Even as we approached Kisi, it was still raining. Chikimbuo, wawe, ikisi kweni ni bafu ya mungu. When everyone else was complaining about drought and a lack of sufficient food at the beginning of the year, Uku Kisi it was so green, how did they used to transport food to various towns at Nairobi, especially in Boga. From Kisi town, it will take you about 50 minutes to one hour to get to Tabaka. We are now in Tabaka Ward in Kisi County. This is the heart of soapstone and soapstone carving. Soapstone carving has been the main pillar of tobacco's economy for generations. It has created employment for hundreds of young people in tobacco. We are here at Kisi Soapstone Art and Craft Center, Kisak. 
The shop is visible from the highway and you may confuse it to just being a curio shop with beautiful products. But whatever goes in behind the shop is an entire factory. These beautiful polished eye-catching pieces are the end product made from soapstones. But how and where does all this begin? If you are a travel enthusiast, you have definitely encountered these sculptures. But if you're just visiting or moving around this country, that's more more an easy mark. Mercurials. Now this is a finished product. Let's go to the original story. I'm here to find out what really takes place in the soapstone mine. His hem in Aitonia Gichenche. Nyagichenje. Yeah. Uh -huh. Kiangalia his hem. Yeah. Kuna kazi ambayo inafanya kahapa kwa mine. Yeah. Ambayo ni mine ya soapstone. Yeah. So kwa hivyo, mm. kitazama upande wa juu, naona kuna watu wanafanya kazi. Mm -hmm. Kiangalia upande ule, mm. kuna pia watu wanafanya kazi pale. Yeah. Yeah. Na kuna department tafauti tafauti za hii kazi. Hapa hapa kwa kwari kuna department tofauti. Eh tofauti. Unieleze. Kwa sababu kijaribu kuangalia kama wale wanafanya kazi kule. Eh, eh. Wanatengeneza trust. Mm. Hizi za kutengeneza flow. Mm, mm. Pia huwa zinatumika kutengeneza rangi. Mm, mm. Za kupaka nyumba. Eh, eh, Naona? Eh. Na pia zinafanyaga decoration. Utaona kuna ziko aina mbili. Eh. Kuna hizi ziko zinakaa fine. Eh. Hizo sasa zinaenda kutengeneza trust za flow. Eh. Lafu kiangalia hizo zenye ziko kubwa kubwa, yeah. zinaenda kufanya decoration mm. kwa manyuma. Yeah, yeah. Mining of soapstone is a labor-intensive process that uses no machinery. Instead, miners work with different tools to achieve the dig-out of large stone chunks. Sasa hapa ndiyo yeah. tuna, tuna mine is blocks. Yeah. Bazo zinaenda kutumika kutengeneza za products. Yeah, yeah. Kiangalia sasa hapa kuna tools mbali mbali ambazo huwa zinatumika hapa. Kwa mfano kuna hii. Kisa yeah. mnaita nini? Kuna hii chiso. Hiyo mm. ni, ni, ni chise lakini kubwa. Oh, kubwa. Oh, okay. eh. so, kuna hii nye mbamba. Yeah. Sasa bada ya kudrill na hii. Yeah. Ndiyo sasa una, unaingisha hii. Okay. Unapiga. Unapiga. Na nyundo. Yeah. Na hiyo nyundo kubwa. Yeah. Sasa ndio jio linapasuka. Linapasuka. Kulingana oh. na size ya nyundo unataka. Eh. Yeah. Alafu kiangalia hapa kuna kuna hii tindo. Eh. Yeah. Sasa hii ni ya kungoa kutoka chini. Mm. Wacha ni jaribu nione kama nitatoboa kutoa hii mawe. Mbona za gonga hapa utoe hii. Once the stones are mined, the sizes have to be reduced into desired shapes so that they are easy to transport and most rejects left in the quarry. Natoa ile size. Eh. Nataka ya kuenda kuchonga kitu kama hii sasa. Eh. Hii ni paka. Ni paka. Hii ni paka na chonga. Eh. Huyu paka sasa ni yule anataye mpanya. Kuna kapanya kadogo kanatengenezwa hapa chini. Oh. Ukishamaliza paka, panya inatengenezwa kana kwamba inakuliwa na paka. Na sasa yaani unaona mawe hivi uh -huh. na ushaoona paka, ushaoona panya. <laughs> Bas. Kama hii unaona nini? Kama hiyo sasa na sachonga ndofu, kiwa inasimama. Oh inasimama hivi. Eh drunk up. Oh. Tunaita drunk up. Oh hii ile vile nafanya nga hivi. Eh ile menua kichwa juu. Okay. Ndio. Okay. Maana hapo ni kichwa. Eh. Yeah. Hii ni miguu hapa chini. Na hii sasa inaita walking. Na hii uno, unaona nini? Hii sasa ukiangalia yeah. na saona kama figa ya yeah. mtu. Ya mtu. Ya. Yeah. Uso iko wapi ama Sasa hapa ukitengeneza figa ya mtu yeah. unaiweka tu hivi. Okay. Ukiweka hivi yeah. ukichapa hapa hivi ikitolewa mm. na hapa ikitolewa kifua mbele hapa. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Alafu unaweka kichwa hapa. Kichwa. Oh, yeah. okay. Wacha ni huu ndio hii sasa inatokea hapa chini. Akiwa anaweka miguu nyuma. Eh. Yeah. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, now. Same way. Here, you know, I'm here. Here, sasa, I'm here. Eh. 
hiyo naweza tengeneza mm. hata jirafu jirafu eh, eh. ukiweka hapa ni base eh oh, sasa hapa. eh mm. hivi basi hivyo eh unaicha hapa 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 hivi eh hivi kicho kinatokea na hapa okay eh, eh. Wow. Hiyo ni chirafu. Hiyo ni art kabisa. Hiyo mm. sasa hii ni art and craft jiwa. practical. Eh. Unaangalia jiwa unaona itatoka nini? Inatoka nini? Lakini na hayo mm. unaichonga kodi na sample hilo umepewa. Eh, okay. Ama kwa order hilo umepewa. As I watched Joseph do the carving, he did it so effortlessly and I couldn't wait to try out. Wacha nijaribu tuone. Eh, kama hapo sasa. Hivyo. Mm. Ndio. Natoa hivyo. Vile yai inakata. Eh. Mm. Oh. Lakini ukitoa mm. unawekera tu chini hivi. Hivi. Ndio usikate. Oh, kidole. Eh. Hivyo. Wewe eh. kudeal na hizi panga every day is risky. Unaona hata nimeogopa nisijikate, but how did I do for a first time in a substone mine? Usinijibu. I know. I tried. So to metoka quarry size. We want to see what they do with the raw material. The carving process has three stages that starts with the sketching, the desired shape, then fine chiseling, then knifing which is now the first process that happens once the stones leave the quarry before going through a process of quality control. Quality control process is a very crucial process especially because his crafts are handmade. The process involves checking of the designs, shape and leveling. Leveling ni kuhakikisha that the product is firm and stable when placed on a surface as well as color and patterns are suitable as needed. Although soapstone is found in many other countries around the world, the Kenyan variety found in Kisi is unique. It comes in a variety of colors such as white, pink, gray, and even black. It is relatively soft compared to the ones found in other countries. Here at Kisak, every process that goes into making the final product is very crucial. The carved soapstone is washed and smoothed using sandpaper. He processes in it with sanding. They say if you go to the Romans do as the Romans do. Na sasa ju leo tuko tabaka, lazima I know how to do what they do best. So I joined up with a team of vibrant women. Na ndio hii kazi nikaanza as we talked about hii kazi ya sanding. So sasa hii nitajuaje nime ikoaje sasa hii sasa ukijua kama hiyo bila hiyo hujai nini unafanya unapata mwenye anajua anakuzia usikie eh kati ya hiyo yenye jaosha na yenye moosha kuna tofauti hii na ka slippery na ile na ka rough eh when you are touching it is rough oh so unaonaje hai sasa imekuwa iko soft oh iko soft sasa nikishamaliza hapa ni ni yake hapa hapa ndio utamaliza kuna sanifepa namba 600 kuna 600 Oh. Hiyo hiyo hiyo. Hii. Ah, hiyo unaweka nini? Eh, hii hapa. Eh. Oh, pendua. Oh, ni pendua hivi. Eh, sasa weka. Sasa nifanye hivi. Okay. So I know na Juliza, mbona hii kazi ya kuosha na kusmooth and soap stones inafanywa na wanawake? Nasemekana wanaume hawana roho ya kuvumilia the nature of this job. It's labor intensive and requires a lot of keenness as each piece can be sanded up to 6 times. Ati wanaume hawananga roho ya persistence ama patience. Eh wanaume ufanye hii kazi? Wanaume wanafanya lakini inabidi utie roho sio wote. Eh kuna wakukumilia na kuna wakona rondogo wanachoka haraka. Wanachoka. Msinipige nani? Si mimi nimesema I am just a mere messenger. But to be fair, digging up the stones in the quarry is a hard job na si kuona wanawake huko. So kila mtu akona kazi yake. Coming to work every day and working in the same job can be boring because it's a routine. Kila siku ni kuosha mawe na sandpaper. Of course, you have to look for ways to have fun, pass the time, buffer at many things. 
as curious to find out what keeps these women motivated, grounded as they do this job. Nimesikia kuna wimbo. Eh, wimbo iko. Kuna wimbo? Eh. Ah, stream basi. Wanasema raha jipe mwenyewe. But on a serious note, it's impressive to see that a number of people in this area have done this job for more than 20 years. African carvings have become a very popular decor in recent years. Many people are taking more interest in global art forms and with the rise in popularity of abstract sculptures, this type of art is being adopted in offices, galleries and even homes. Peter Ombasi, who is our host, submitted a few sculpture designs to the National Sculpture Society during the 88th Annual Awards Exhibition in New York in 2021. So the cycle of life was designed in 2021 yeah. during the COVID time. Yeah. So that is the time we had an opportunity to develop products. Yeah. And this shows, this elaborates about the human spirit mm. and it shows a story of continuity of life. Mm. So the different bands it takes, it shows, mm. it shows that life will never always be a smooth run. Yeah. At times you might face challenges, ups and downs. Yeah. But it's it is carved out of one piece of stone. Yeah. That is the unique selling point of it. Yeah. So one has to dig into the different holes, chisel it, yeah. and avoid it. It's breaking. It's breaking to successfully at arrive that one piece. Oh my! There's no. There's no what? connection, and it's just one piece. One that, piece. that is connected to each other. <laughs> The National Sculpture Society is dedicated to promoting excellence in sculpture that is inspired by nature. And of course, kuna kuanga na some dollars to win. Si vivi tu, hini ligi so. The jury selection shows 55 sculptures out of 492 entries. This particular piece submitted by Ombachi shows the cycle of life and was among the 55 selected across the world. Mpigieni makofi. This was and is still a huge win for Kisak as well as the people of Tabaka and Kenya as a whole. This is how Kisak has placed the soapstone caveat on the global map. Ukiona this stuff kwa market, just know there is a lot of work put into making it this dope. Once the sanding process is done, the product is polished and depending on the design, it can be dyed or painted into beautiful colors. So as we've previously seen, the yeah. products were raw. Yeah. They didn't have any they didn't have any color. Yeah. But now you can see they're making different designs out of them. Yeah. So for instance, you can see you can see he's having stars yeah. post yeah. on a stone. Yeah. Now they have drawn lizards on this piece. Yeah. yeah. He's doing flowers yeah. on the other side. So you can see these are done, these are complete piece. Yeah. The flowers. And the other side is doing the red strips. Yeah. And that is a design we call the Python. Which one? This one? Yeah. Or this one? That is ah, the okay. Depending on how you market this product, it has the potential to be a premium product. And here at Kisak, this has been a generation kind of business. It has gone through the generations and let's understand how they have managed to market globally as well as locally. On our website, yeah. I think if you click Kisak, there is a website. There is a website. Okay, tell us what's the name of the website. It is Kisak Fair Trade. Yeah. But for online selling, yeah. we use the word Global Craft. Global craft. craft. Yeah. W Kisak w Global craft. craft. So yeah. that will just bring you to yeah. here in the vehicle because the map is there. Yeah. So you use the Google map. Yeah. It will stop outside here. Yeah. And that is during Christmas we had very many visitors from, yeah. all, from over all over the, the country. Soapstone mining has created employment for many dwellers in Tabaka area and Kisi yeah. at large. How many people do you employ here? Uh, there are those ones we employ on 
on full time who are yeah. our employees. Yeah. And the bigger number, yeah. if we have them here, we pay them. Yeah. Yeah. And the, when the work is there, we have them. But yeah. of course, when the orders have gone down, yeah. they will not be working. But yeah. average, we have got about, could be about 33. 33, 33 people that you have yes. employed. And some yeah. are not here. Yeah. And there are those ones who work for us, so like mm. the Sanders, the women yeah. who saw down yeah. here. Yeah. We have one cluster we call Nyaki Chenche, we yeah. have got about 66. Yeah. We have another class of about 20. Uh, we have got covers in the place called Sameta, yeah. uh, about 20, 25. Yeah. I think average we could be having like 250. 250, yeah. This is just a number of people employed at Kisak, but the soapstone business is popular here. Meaning, there are many more that get their livelihoods from the soapstone carving business, either directly or indirectly. Here at Kisak, they not only deal with soapstone carving, but also wood carving. They do 90% stone and 10% wood carving. This yeah. Is, okay. Oh, you, so you mean this this parts, this one? Yeah, the parts, the white. So this is just naturally occurring. All those are natural, oh. and they occur unevenly. You don't know where the white part will, where yeah. the dark part is. So even as you're making it, it's an adventure. Yeah, it's an adventure yeah. itself. Okay. Because we believe you'll never find a same piece yeah. like that yeah. in that the the mixing of the of the white and the dark parts yeah. can never occur similar in any piece of wood. Most of the wood art pieces here are sold as designs before being carved and the market as well is global. Where is this one going? This has been bought yeah. by an art collector yeah. from Luo, yeah. but is based in Greece. Oh. So, so all the way? All the way to there. So is it, is it going to Greece or it end up? It's going to Greece. And how, so, mu how much? 300,000. Once you have seen the amount of work that goes into a piece, you get to appreciate it even more. The wood finishing process is the final step of the manufacturing process that gives wood surfaces desirable characteristics including enhanced appearances and increased resistance to moisture and other environmental stuff. There's so much creativity in every piece done here. Incredibly perfect in my eyes. This needs a lot of patience because most of the pieces take months to complete and the details in every piece is out of this world. Nick has been working on that for a month or so. On this particular piece? Yes, yeah. Na kukausha, si kukausha too. The wood is supposed to be dried in the right temperatures. You can dry wood using two techniques. You can yeah. either dry it in a heat treatment facility. Yeah. But this is good. So this is a... Because this, this avoids any crack. With the heat treatment, yeah. you might, the wood might have some cracks. Okay. But with this right temperature, it will take a little bit longer, yeah. but it will give you the right and the perfect finish. So what you're saying, this is, um, this is by design. Yeah, this, by design. The, uh, this treatment yeah. of this wood and this thatch house yeah. is by design. Yeah, all, all our wood pieces we dry them in this room. The Kisak organization is responsible for helping thousands of artisans attain sustainability in their lives. And we have seen how they have managed to create employment for many people around the Tabaka area and beyond. I've enjoyed being here and learned so much about soapstone mining and carving. I've seen how Kisak has placed the soapstone cabin on the global map and got to hang out with vibrant women and learned how sanding is done. I'm still amazed at how stones can be made into different beautiful cabins. I literally wanted the entire gallery in my house. I saw the creatives in their true nature of carving these amazing wood sculptures. I also got to see the busy Kisi town and enjoy my walk in the rain, equally in the Bafuya moon. You know, when I say manga, my heart is full. And I'll say today, my heart is literally full. Can't wait to see where the next adventure will take me. 
And if you spot a hidden or an unexplored gem, you can share with us through our social media handles on the screen. See you next week, same place, same time. Until then, the adventure continues. continues. At least we can spot them. Yeah. I've seen now the pair of cranes yeah. and the sea tatunga. Um, we are doing the crane count. Mm. So one thing we do is we first spot them. Mm. We are f doing what we call a physical count. Mm. So when you see the, the, the birds, yeah. uh, number one, uh, you have to know the, the habitat. Yeah. Uh, the behavior, yeah. like those ones uh, you are seeing, they are starting still yeah. and trying to preen. That is known as preening. Let me see. Mm. It's trying to um, stretch, to strengthen and, and also stretch their, their, their feathers, mm. especially those tiny ones. Huh? Mm. So that is known as pre preening. Yeah. And then. Uh, and why do they do that? Uh, they do that because they want to. Uh, it's like after breathing, you have to wipe. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah. Mm. So when you said you are counting cranes, what, what like a census? Yeah, it is an, a national census of cranes. Eh? Mm. We want to establish their numbers mm. uh, within different counties. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of interest, I would want to inform you that uh, Kenya holds 45 percent of the cray crowned crane mm. of the world according to the IUCN report. Having noted that, mm. there is need for us to continue conserving these wetlands yeah. or their habitat for them to continue breeding yeah. because uh, these, as I said earlier on, are indicators of the changes taking place in the environment. Mm. Uh, this particular bird has a very big history. Mm. For example, um, if we were to consider or if people would, uh, would be like cranes, eh, yeah. the issue of AIDS would not be. Yeah. Or uh, maybe would not have a reason, uh, because when they get married, mm. they are faith, they are faithful to one another. Yeah. They can only remarry if one loses a partner. But uh, again, that one takes a longer time mm. before even they. The and lose one, a partner here, you mean when a chana am a losing death. a partner, death. It's not, uh, not uh, they don't divorce. Yeah. Yeah. And this census is happening now? It's happening later? No, it's happening. It started actually on the 28th. That was the day before yesterday. Mm. And it is going to go on for the next two weeks. Mm. Uh, all over Kenya. Meru. And uh, who's the, conducting the census? Uh, the census are being conducted by several organizations mm. who came together. But it's being spearheaded by mm. National Museums of Kenya yeah. and Kenya Wildlife. Okay. And then uh, we have moved in as International Crane Foundation mm. because uh, International Crane Foundation are actually the world uh, organization mm. uh, caring for cranes. Mm. Yeah, all over the world. And so you are part of the we, ICF? Yeah, I, I work for ICF EWT mm. partnership in Kenya. And uh, we are among the team that is actually counting the cranes. Mm. I'm in charge of Transoya mm. County and mm. West Pokot. And West Pokot, yeah. And my, my counterparts are actually in Baringo, mm. uh, Bungoma, uh, Kakamega, and, 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 and Nanti. Okay. Yeah. Census, you are going to 10 years for us, uh, Upper Kenya, mm. for the cranes. After the, how many years, or do you do it yearly? No, it is it is after four years. Eh? After four years. Yeah, okay. and then we do the the counting in within two two seasons. Eh? Mm. There's what we call dry spell census. Mm. That is during dry season is mm. when we we undertake that, eh? yeah. and then there, there is the wet season mm. that will also. So we want to compare uh, when are these cranes active? Mm. I mean the general ecology of, of of that crane within the two seasons. And let me ask you now yeah. that you have you have been with cranes for for how long now? For almost 35 years. 35 years, wow. Yeah. So do they still fascinate you and what is it that stands out? They still fascinate me because uh, of their culture and mm. tradition. They command within yeah. the 42 uh, communities of Kenya. And again, uh, the, the part itself is so beautiful. Mm. Their performance and their, their general behavior yeah. also fascinates me yeah. more. 
Do you feel like now the other birds feel uh, jealous now that you pay more attention to the crane? <laughs> well, it is hard to to tell, but uh, of course, um, if they were like human beings, they would yeah, feel they jealous. Would, yeah. yeah, luckily yeah. they are not. Yeah, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is investigating, mm. and this one they are now coming to tell you. You see, when it elongates like that, yeah. it is actually now ruffled threatening. Yeah. It's warning this one that uh, don't come near. Oh. Don't. So, so now it's telling me don't come here. Yeah, in. when it does like that, mm. it is, even you, if you are nearing it, if it so does like, like that. This thing that it's doing with the leg. It, it, like that, eh? yeah. it's like we, we are now friends. I mean, oh. we are friendly. Oh, we are friendly. friendly. And this one is saying, no, you see this kissing. Oh, this one. No, oh. don't, don't move nearer. Oh. They cannot trust them. Oh, that's what it's doing. Yeah. Look, oh, don't, don't the, move. Two, the, the two are, are talking. Look. Oh, the, oh, the two of them yeah. are talking about. Yeah. Ah, yeah but then, yeah. okay, let's come. Let's come. That's yeah. the best. You see? Yeah. Thank you. Now they are going to come nearer. Mm -hmm. They are asking, yeah. can we greet them or not? Yeah. You see, this one is now asking. Yes. Is it true? Yes. Yeah. We are friends now. We are friends now. When you see the. The crown now spread. Oh, so that we, means they're friends. Yeah, they, yeah, we can now go near their friends. No oh. problem. No problem. You see? No problem. Yeah, we can get together. No problem. No problem. Oh, yeah. And then? Yeah. Now, yeah. The, the other one is asking. Yeah. This, this the other two, the first one, yeah. is asking, yeah. can we go ahead and be friends or what do you think? Then it says, no, <coughs> can't trust that. And then this one also says the same. Oh. But at some point they will just get together. Look at that. That's but they are still they are still asking. Each one is asking that. Do we trust these other guys? Mm. Because they, they, they are not the same. Normally they are they are family, but these are elderly. Oh. I mean adults. 